Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to Silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruit the brain. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but it's grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stand Yeah, it took some hard work, blind up, play a huge role And they say that I don't, when they're feeding you fool's gold No, I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe and even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to call Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world all that stress ain't saving me, fear though. I swear to God, I'm trying. But they pushing the demons down my esophagus. Screaming the easy life, what I want always. Praise made up holidays. Tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. But I'm more so now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall grin. And if you feel it, do it with me. And just sing with the song, say it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. This is Unsolicited, and I am Security Boss. Hello, everyone. How are you doing tonight? I hope all is well. This is the first Monday since we pushed the time forward. <laughs> How y'all doing with that? How you like the idea that it's 7 in the evening and it's still nice and bright outside? Doesn't it make you feel like you need to be doing something? <laughs> More than just, you know, I love what you're doing. And I'm glad you're here, but it's light and beautiful outside, especially in my state. So with this new time, I don't know, guys, we might have to come on later. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, hello, everyone. I'm just here saying hello. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure when you come into the um, live, you're giving me the thumbs up. Tonight is um, Monday night and I'm here with my fabulous co-host. It would be Black Man Unfiltered. Come on up, Black Man. Y'all see, I got my mic. This is a new thing for me. Anyway, black man, come on up. What's up? Security what's up, what's up? What's going on? What's going on? I don't think nobody heard anything I said a minute ago because my mic was too far away from my we, mouth. Yeah, we heard you. It just sounded like you was far away. But we heard yeah, it. I was. I was out there in the sun because it's still bright, light bright outside. And right. you know, we're used to doing right. this in the dark, so it's a little different. Vaughn, how are you? Uh, Sir Hell, how are you doing? And black man. How are you doing? Man, I am here. I, it is amazing to be here with you and Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss, dearly beloved. What's going on, my guy in the back? I always got to speak to my <laughs> guy. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Jenny, hello, Jenny. How are you? Happy Monday. Jenny, I'm still getting used to this thing. This is the first Monday we've had since that time went forward. This is going to take some getting used to. How do you like this? Do you like this better or the other way? Uh, I don't know, because it's kind of weird being outside, and it's seven o'clock almost eight o'clock and the sun still out how about nine o'clock here it'd be nine o'clock and it's Ooh, just dark. yeah yeah i couldn't do it oh god but them long days are just something else they're yeah. good it's yeah. good yeah but it takes a yeah you're right yeah it's interesting hey, hey, last, night, man, last night was interesting you hey look now mr boss last night you had you had your you had your wife looking spectacular last night what was going on last night? What happened? The, the lighting, the lighting was oh, good. Was everything in order? The lighting was good. The the clothes, the outfit was all on point. I mean, you was killing it, it last night. But you had yeah. on black last night. See, I'm, 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 you know, I, you know, you know how I be feeling. Sometimes I want to come in here like 
you know, a trooper ready to fight. Sometime I want to be matronly, you know, last night I had my black. So I love, I love black. I love black. BCDC one, two, three. We do want to be married. Hello. How are you? It's good to see you. Listen, we that was a poll question and 100 percent of everyone said, yes, they eventually want to be married. How about that? Mm -hmm. That was that was really good. Oh, Jenny, so you like Jenny, you like white? I like white, too, sometimes. But I tell you, that black be killing it. But thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, black man, mm -hmm. we did have a good time last night. Yes. It was interesting. So that, that brought us to what we're going to talk about today, but we ain't going to get into it yet. We're going to let a few others come in so they can experience this with us so we can um, go back and forth and I can get how you, well, you married. I can't really ask you because you probably feel the way that I do, but I want I want you to tell me what you think too, um, because they talking about us. If, oh, if, yeah, yeah. if indeed we're judging, they're speaking to the um, people that are married. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, I don't like that. No, you got to tell me about this because I, I was talking to Sir Boss today and I was like, so tell me what judgment is. I'm not even sure what that means, but we ain't going to get there yet. Let's go back a little bit, catch up over the weekend. Some of the things that happened um, It's one thing, you know, you heard about the Tracy Braxton. It was sad. Yeah, that was sad. She passed yeah. away 50 years old. That was so sad. Yeah, that cancer or something else, man. That cancer. Yeah, esophageal, esophageal cancer. That's like, what? What yep. is that? You know? Uh and um, I had an opportunity to, you know, I'm trying to spread my wings a little bit and try to support other channels and things like that. And I'm not yeah. going to say I'm not going to say any names. No, you can, because I think I was there with you, wouldn't I? No, not on this one. Oh, OK. I start to tag you in it, but I was just like, no, security boss would be out of here in 50 seconds. So I was on the panel and there was this young lady on the panel. Um, and she was talking about they were talking about how to change the culture. And these were her words. She said, black men are the poison of the of the country. Oh. They're, they're victims. They play victimhood. They uh, don't nobody care about no black men. Black women don't care about black men. Uh, she went down this whole thing about uh, black men ain't this, they ain't that, they lazy, they horrible. Uh, they call each other kings when they're not kings. Uh, they answer to their white daddies every day when they go to work. Um, she said the smarter children are the children that come from white men and black women. Oh yeah. I mean, I what was, is that? they just let her talk and nobody interrupted. Nobody oh, said anything. You thought I was going to be on their panel and not say nothing. I was getting ready to say it. I, I would I, like, slow down girl. What's wrong with you? Cause this, that's all her. Cause that's a lot of hate. We went, man, we went at it. We you went, and her went back and forth. Oh, and oh black we, we, you were supposed to send that to me. Oh, oh, you think yeah, yeah, I got because and because she's kept saying, you know, men been like this since the beginning of time. And I was like, well, you know, you had people that stood up like uh, uh I say you say you said Martha King would play victim. Um, you know, she said, Oh, black men playing victim to their big white daddy, and big white daddy is the one got y'all in confused, and there ain't no such thing as uh racism, and it's not affecting black men. Racism don't affect black men at all. And but I mean, she just oh, it was. So was she confused about what she was? Well, one of the guys on the panel did say that to her. I'm, I'm thinking she might be a little bit. I'm not saying confused per se. She might not might know, but maybe y'all just didn't couldn't tell where she was. Who she oh, was? Yeah, she, yeah, she was up. She was an avatar. Oh man, that ain't fair. Yeah, she was. Oh, she, that ain't fair. She, she didn't care. Well, she she might have an alternative lifestyle or something that she's rooting for. M Mills, how are you? Oh, M Mills says my dad had esophagus cancer several years ago. Praise God, he survived it. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Yes, it's good to hear, and it's, I'm glad you're here. That is good. Absolutely. Stephen Day, how are you? Stephen Day, SB Nation, you got it. You got it. Yes, Listen, sir. That was terrible to hear. Black man to have someone. I mean, I understand that you may have had a traumatic situation with maybe daddy, first five boyfriends of your life, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But you still can't blame the whole race of uh <laughs> black men on that situation. I mean, black men are trash, black men are uh I mean she just went in yeah. and I mean would wouldn't stop, just went in, and then black men are the most violent men. Oh. Like, you know, the most. And then so I brought up the whole thing about Tina Knowles. I said, listen, you need to go watch the documentary Black Man Profile. And she said, you know what? I like you. She said, as a person, I like you. 
you know, I don't have anything against you, uh, Black Man Unfiltered. She said, but I have no way possible I will go listen to Beyonce's, uh, what did she say? Pick me, mammy, mama. Protecting oh, she these. was protect- really upset, wasn't oh, she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Protecting these Black men. I was like, what? Hold on for a minute. Listen to this. The um, Anti-Social Socialite Podcast says th- that's a divester who is projecting. Oh, uh, so she's thrown over to the white. Uh, to, okay. Oh, for okay. Yeah, uh-huh, that's what she said. She said the, the the most beautiful children and the most educated children are children that come from white men and black women. Oh, oh. That's it. Those were the words came out of her mouth. But you know what? It's interesting that you would say that because now that I'm thinking about it, I saw one time on Courtney Michelle's channel. Mm-hmm. That a, a lady was on there, and she said she was a divester also, and she was um, now dating uh, a white man. But she said she had dated, I think maybe this was her third one, and the first one, I want to say, was abusive to her. Yeah. So, but you know, between, like I, was, I, well, you know, I got to put some comedy in this thing. The difference between black men, black men will sit there and take all that. They'll take, you know, uh, being verbal, and, and that's one. I'm gonna say this first, the serious part first. There was a guy on the show that said. Uh, she said, he asked her, when women get verbally abused, verbally abused, should they leave? She said, absolutely. They shouldn't stay with these weak black men. They're weak. White black men are just weak. And he said, so uh, they leave their children. They leave the women. And so he asked her, well, if a black man get verbally abused, should he leave? Mm. And she said, oh, he should be strong enough to stay. He's just weak. Why don't you oh, want to wow. she tell me, define what that means? Because uh, what define what verbal abuse is, because verbal abuse could be I stepped on his big toe. See, she tra- she's moving the goalposts, right? And so, but anyway, but I, like I said, you know, you can go be with those white guys and have no problem. You love who you love. But at the end of the day, if we really want to get, if we really want to get deep into it, those white men are not putting up with that because what's going to happen is, you're going to start talking to him any kind of way, and he's going to smile. He's going to say, you know what, baby? You're right. Baby, yep. I'm, playing a, I'm playing a trip for us. Let's go get a, Let's go out here and rent a boat. Don't do it. Don't you get it. Uh-huh. She, let's let's she rent a boat. You're going to go put at, on uh-huh. her feet. Oh, yeah. He's going to say, baby, look at the whale. She's going to say, where? He's going to say, <laughs> there they go. <laughs> Show. <laughs> Don't say yeah. that. That's too much. Okay. Let's hold on for a bit. Let's say hello to everybody. It's <laughs> 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 so <laughs> sure. Anti-social, like, hello, I love your comments. Thank you for being here. Uh, Bethany, hello, thank you for being here. M Mills, I think I said hello. I did say hello to you, and I love your comment and sharing that with you about your dad. Thank you for being here. Uh, Hi, Keem, thank you for being here, sir. It's good to see you. Um, If it's someone that I miss, I will definitely get to you in just a moment. I am so glad that you all here. This is the first Monday after this Time change. I know it's got everybody. Well, maybe not everybody. Got me a little twisted, but we're going to catch up with it, though. Um, Oh, Jenny Morin says, I have a non-existent dad in my life. A few failed relationships, though, that does not affect my marriage or the rearing of my kids. I will not bring any negativity into our home. Jenny, I agree. Yes, you can't carry these things. But this young lady, I can't hear you, black man. I said, Jenny is amazing. I keep telling her that, man. Jenny be putting them comments in there, man. She be on it. She Aria, it. hello. How are you too? Scam likely. How are you, sir? So, um, wait a minute. What do you say? B Smithers, Smithers will send Natasha on a one-way Uber back. To- <laughs> you are something else. Listen, y'all, we're not promoting any kind of violence over here. No, no. Ara, I'm sorry. Is it Ara? I hope it's Ara. How are you? It's good to see you. Always good to see you. All of you, I am so glad that you are here today. And listen, all of you who are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so you can become part of this SB Nation. We are going up. And I want all of y'all to be a part of it because y'all support me so much. And I'm so glad. You know what? You guys show up to these pre-shows and then we go over to Sir Hale and y'all have it going in that chat. I mean, Ooh, going. That chat be moving. Don't it be moving. They be like, uh-uh. No, he ain't. Secure advice. You said this. Secure advice. Yep. <laughs> I don't care. I say anything. <laughs> y'all gonna have to catch me on the bad day if, my, if I'm not talking. So <laughs> Marquis, uh, Mark, excuse me. Thank you so much. It says, um, Tan Man Unfiltered says, <laughs> once you go white, you get you get your credit right. <laughs> you know what? Y'all, listen, we're going to be nice. But listen, this also brings me to Black Man. That um, 
that video you sent me just a little bit ago with mm -hmm. um, TLA. Yep. She walked right into that, didn't she? She sure did. But listen, why would she not send the woman to prison, though, to jail? Why, why a woman can't? I think it's worse when women do stuff like that. Then, well, I didn't hear, you know, it started out kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't women, know what exactly happened. Right, so. you had to watch the whole thing. There was just a clip. The she said women um, should be canceled. They they should if they go through something yeah. or they commit a crime, you should cancel them. Um, and bring, men, them, into home, bring yeah. them into a home and have a therapist like her or someone uh -huh. come and figure out what's going on in their head. Yeah, right. And um, and then she said men are strong enough. Just throw them in jail. Yeah. I heard, hello, Mimsy. How are you? I heard that. What is wrong? That's not right. Considering, you know, what I heard him get, what I hear, heard him say was like, what if a man molested um, a child or something right. to that, or yes. watched yes. a child or something to that nature? Yes. And she was, then that's when she added jail. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, if a me. woman do it, get her counseling. But if a man do it, go to, he, he's strong enough to go to jail. She said she's going to get him some counseling, too, but he could handle jail if that's what she decided to do. Right. Basically, basically, excuse me. What is wrong with us? <laughs> I have no idea. Why do we want to throw men away so easily? It's like, and, and, get out. And, and like you said, we're talking about the news over the weekend. I was a part of two platforms that completely drained me unconditionally. Um, <laughs> I, did that, I did that first one. It was cool. The other people were cool with that one lady. Oh, my God. She was horrible. But uh, I was on Anton's last. Was that last night? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Anton had a, a twenty-four hour thing going on last night. Yeah, yeah twenty-four hour marathon. Listen, was, after so hell, I'm done. Yeah. yeah matter of fact, matter of fact, that um, that uh, I think it's still on right now. You kidding me? No, oh, no, that's what. Well, twenty-four hours will be eleven o'clock tonight, right? Yeah. So they're still going right now. Lord help them. D Nicole, hello. How are you? So, so listen. So what, that, oh yeah, go ahead. What did you see? Tell me what did you see? Because I didn't. Oh, 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 I did see a little bit of it. I saw. No, you go ahead and tell me what you talking about. I had to go off. Uh, you know, and E Man, if he watching, you know I love him. We bump heads a lot. But man, it was this guy on there, and he had a kid with a lady, and uh -huh. the lady uh, called the police. His ex wife called the police on him. And told the police, she told him if he didn't leave, because he he cheated on her, right? And he admitted okay. to it. And okay. He said he, she called the police and told the police he hit me. Oh, she lied. Wow. Yeah. Uh huh. And he said he was making five thousand dollars a month working for the mayor of Houston. Oh wow. And when you get a domestic violence charge like that, you lose you your job immediately. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he said that really messed his whole life up in that area. Uh, he they he had never be able to work for another uh, person like that, and uh, so he said from that she took the baby and her family's well off, right? So she took the baby, and he said he hadn't seen his little girl in two years, and she she's getting all the child support, everything that she needs for the baby, but she, he can't see she will not let him see the baby. So here's now here go my boy E man come in, and here go another E man supporter comes in. And they're just eating this guy up. Well, you shouldn't have shot the club up. You shouldn't have got her pregnant. You knew what you was dealing with when you first got with her. Why are you having sex? Why you was having sex with her? I'm like, I'm just sitting there listening. I'm like, ain't no, I'm going to say something about five seconds. And so I was like, E man, hold on, guy. We're talking about this man. Why, what are, and there was an older guy on there, OG. I, know, I don't know if you're familiar with him, the comedian. I think I know Jay. His name Jay too, isn't Jay, it? Uh -huh, yeah, Jay. Jay, ooh, yeah. Jay got me and Jay tag teamed them. Oh no! Yeah, it got real. And uh, Jay was like, um, "There are a lot of men out here that have made mistakes." Yes, women. yes. And he said, "Every man deserves redemption. Every man deserves a second chance at life." And he said, yeah. "Instead of you guys sitting here supporting this man and trying to get this man to help to see his child." Y'all telling him what he shouldn't have done. He's and and, and then I it's tell already him, done, yeah. Right, and I was like, this man, black men hear this every day. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You trash every day. They don't need to hear another black man saying it. Oh, right. scam, see, scam likely was there. See, look in the comments. Scam likely said it was a jungle last night. Yeah, he said black man. They had me uh, mad as hell. Mad as hell. Honestly, <laughs> he was there, and so they were just beating this man over the head, beating him over the head. You you shouldn't have did. You shouldn't have did. And I just jumped in there and said, listen, man. And nobody's perfect. And I say, E-Man, were you guys having sex at that age? 
Yep. Yeah, we was. I said the only difference between you and this young man right here is that he got her pregnant and y'all got lucky. Or maybe deletion. You never know. Or, or, or deletion. And but but yeah, man. Once we, me and OG got through with a man, you could hear a rat pissing on the cotton ball. It was quiet. Yeah, you know what though? Because there's nothing he can do about what he he can learn from it and right. don't make his next mistake. But we all do make mistakes in the beginning, and that's very important that you all wanted to support him. But you know something that um that brings me to another statement. And then we're gonna get on our topic. Okay. But that brings me to the fact too that I noticed that um. We don't really support each other either. Uh, it's almost like we definitely we definitely don't support each other because we we study try steadily trying to tear each other down, man and woman, black man and woman. Instead of um, that brings me to what we're talking about because even last night on Sir Hill's channel, you was there. Um, you, and you know what I talk about? Hey. Hey, Mr. Steele, how are you? I'm always talking about being married. I'm always talking about being in a successful marriage. I'm always talking about how I feel like marriage saved my life, right? And I'm always just giving my point of view about it and how I got to this point. Would you agree with that? I, I so, agree with that. So now I, I may tell you about some things. I share things with you all the time and I hear you say them too. Um, say things that I've said to you, but you don't no one has to take my advice. You have to apply certain things to your own life and make them work for you. My my only advice to someone that wants to be married is to be intentional and to take it serious and then make the rest work for you. But for some reason, and that's why we're here today, do married people judge single people? What do you think? What do you think about that? Do married people judge single people? I think yeah. the, I think it's the opposite. I do too, but do you did you notice the comment and and mindfully misunderstood? I am so sorry, but I gotta use you today. <laughs> I gotta use you because it was him who made the statement about uh, being a professional. Like you can't take advice for someone that uh, I've been married twenty six years. I know what works, right, and right. I don't think anybody can take that from me. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you what I did. And you still have to apply your own things to your own situation. But my whole thing was to be intentional. And I told him I agree with him all day long when he said that. But just because the situation works for me and I want to share it, I am going to share it. Right. I am. And if my life uh, appears to be some sort of a fairy tale to some, I'm sorry. But again, because I want to be covered, because I want to be a wife, I'm going to tell y'all how I got here. Exactly. I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going I'm not going to shut up about it. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, but well, don't let me say anything because of this. And, but my husband's not perfect. I'm not perfect. We, I have talked about a lot of things that have happened in our lives. Right. You don't they don't hear that part. Right. <laughs> your transparency. Right. Right. Yeah, they don't hear the transparency because I'm, I made it through it. And I've always talked about how those things made us tighter. You know how we, we that's my bestie. It's been that way. We together all day, every day. I, I say all these things, not to say that that's what you need to do, black man or anybody. But I'm just telling you how I got here. I invested all my time and energy into being a good wife for my husband. Right. Now, I don't understand it. I don't understand how, how someone can have a success rate at something and you don't want to hear it. I think that and even if you're considering marriage, you should consider, OK, this woman has over 20 years experience. All right. She has a daughter. He has a he has a son. Right. Well, hold on for a minute. Let's see. M. Mill says, yes, you may. Hold on for a minute. It says, yes, you don't realize it, but you can sound condescending, condescending, condescending. I was probably like that when I was married. M. Mills, if you got a moment when we drop that link, I want to hear more about that, because if I'm talking about my life, <laughs> Right. I, need, you, I need somebody to tell me how I'm being condescending when I'm describing my life to you. Right. Now, if I was talking about your life, I could see that. But I would I want to hear more. And thank you so much for that, because I need this this type of criticism. I really do. Thank you. Sir Hill. I really would love to have this because that's not what I'm doing. I'm just telling people I would like to just share with individuals that it's good. Being right. married is good. And what happened to elders being able to speak life into those who are going down the same path to try to help them and try to show them the example. It, it, you know what? I'm going to say it. I don't give a damn. People are, <laughs> people are too damn sensitive, man. 
I, I, you know, people too sensitive. People don't want to take advice no more. People just out here, just all willy nilly, just out here doing what they want to do. They're all over the place. They're just, oh, Lord have mercy. Thank now, you. Now, so was that a judgmental statement? No. It's it's because uh, you know what I'm sick of. I'm sick. I'm sick. You know I'm old protective of my of, of my elder over here, Miss Miss Security Boss. You know I am. And I don't like when you are spewing out your life experiences and not and not you're not talking. The condescending would be, I'm Security Boss and I'm perfect, bitches. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> condescending. No, that's <laughs> condescending. But but you're not being condescending because you're saying. I was in a relationship before. I almost got married. I know the back like the back of my hand now because I'm studying you, right? And you and Mr. Boss. Yeah. I was in a relationship. I almost got married. I'm glad I did not get married. I had a daughter out of that situation. I met Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss also had a child. We came together, right? So not the you first missed, time. You missed another part. Mr. Boss also had another wife. Oh, yeah, right, it had, right, it had another real. wife. It's really real. So you got, so you came from a relationship that almost had marriage. He came from a relationship that was marriage. He he was with a woman that cheated on him, right? Yes. See, and it failed. This is so real you, stuff. So you guys have experienced the things on the outside of before you met each other, and then you came together to experience things with your family and having to walk away from family because of this and have to. You're teaching women. You can't have all these friends around you. I don't understand what is condescending. I think what it is is that they want what you have, but they're not pre- they're not presenting themselves or carrying themselves in a way that will get them there. Hold on for a minute. Eugene Steele, thank you so much for your ten dollar super chat. You get the money line song. Hey. Eugene says some of the single women are the ones who called married women pick meets and, and mammies exactly. because they are lonely. <laughs> if a married woman have single friends, she is the one who has to be careful. <laughs> Listen, a married woman has no room for single friends. She can counsel them from afar or give them advice from afar, but you don't have a space for that. I'm mm-hmm. telling you women. And I don't even know if, listen, wasn't that you last night that says that uh, being a whoremonger is in your DNA? Yep. All right, then. There you go. And, and this is one of the things I love about TJ, too, because I, I like to shout you guys out a lot when, wherever I'm you at. Do. Thank you. You do. And, and, and because because I think you guys are perfect examples of what, what women need to see, the positive influence, because most of these women that are that are, that are saying you pick me's and mammies, they are the ones that are on these platforms. Come out, niggas ain't shit. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, because but, but but again, again, we have to go back and understand when people are speaking like like T.J. Randall came out and said it. When I was younger, I was one of those women who would talk to my married friends and say, oh, girl, you let him control you. Oh, girl, you let him girl. You let a man talk to you like this. T.J. Randall, T.J. even said it. She said, I was that woman and I had to come out outside of trying to be that woman that was trying to destroy everybody else's relationship because I didn't have one. Ooh, I'm telling you, listen, M. Mills Man. had M. Mills had something else she wanted to share. M. Mills, thank you so much for this. You are helping, you are helping me. Um, let me find your comment. Um oh, right here. It was you realize, do you see M. Mills? Hold Wait, on, let me see. Where is it? M. Mills comment, it scrolled up. We'll oh. get it in a minute. But you are helping me. I got to read it a little bit, right? Oh, I see it. I yeah. see it. You don't okay. realize it, but you're talking at them and not to them. I'm 58, so I have turned a few corners. It goes back again to what I said previously. When older people talk, it's me especially. When someone older than me is telling me something, it's not about tone and how they use it. It's about the it's it's about what whatever uh what it's about eat the fish and spit out the bone, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Well, and listen. Pe- M. Mills is helping us right now. So M. Mills, continue on. Again, now, when we drop the link, I would love for you to come up, but we can do it this way too, if you like. But tell me, how do I talk to someone and not at them if they're not willing to listen? Mm. Put that in the chat. Or even if they are, tell me, we're going to just deal with the first part of it. Tell me how I am talking at them. Please do, because you're helping me and I appreciate you so much. So black man, getting back to you, you're, you're right. I can give all of my files because I do all the time. That's how I learned so much 
was with my files <laughs> mm-hmm. and some of the crazy things that I did that were incorrect. So I understand that. Let's see. Uh, BCDCs better appreciate married men and women who actually give us the time of day to in, to introduce solutions. My mother is like she's she ain't got time for the foolishness and tried to educate her single co-workers. Listen, I don't want to be that person. I want to continue to fight. I want to continue to fight to actually right. give the information. And, and, and don't stop fighting. You know what? Oh, because, because, Go because ahead. You know, OG Patrice is in the bill. Hey, OG. So uh, and she's a, that's a good one right there, too, guys. Well, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you this. Um, don't stop fighting because what people want to get you, what people want to do is they want to wear you down until you stop. They want to wear you down until you say, you know what? I'm done. I can't do it no more. They want to put you in the position Ayala Van Zandt's in right now, right? Ayala say, I'm done. I can't deal with black women no more. They sending me death threats to my house. They called in my personal number late at night, telling me they're going to do something to me. She said, I can't deal with them no more. She said, my black sisters, they don't listen to the elders no more. That, you know, and that's why she quit her show. So I, I, listen, we can't let people wear us down when, we, when we're doing the fight. And we're going to get some hell. Oh, we're going to get it. But we got to continue to keep moving forward. We got to so continue. Let's, so let, I'm sorry, Black man. So let's do this super chat. So it's Mikael's wellness and wellness wealth. and wealth. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Yeah. She says, um, Mikael, McCole's, McCole's. That's, yeah. gosh. Let's do it right. McCole's wellness is wealth. wealth. How about that? I like mm-hmm. that. Her super chat, you get a $10. Thank you for your $10 super chat is as a growing Christian single who desires marriage and currently in wife training. I appreciate channels like Security Boss and TJ as it helps me. I see it as wisdom, not being judged. And, and guess Congratulations. what? Congratulations. I want to hear more about this wife camp, though, this wife training. How about that? And guess what? Look at look at, look at her. And she's Nicole. How, are, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, honey. Because my thing is this, you have some women, it doesn't even matter how old she is, because you have some women out there that are like Nicole that wants to see better, that wants to do better. Who in the hell wants to, who in the hell want to hang around people that work at Burger King when you can hang around people that that make, that make that's making, listen, you want to talk to the person that's driving for Uber or you want to talk to, the, be around the person that created it. You, you got to understand, you can't be around people that's been broken all their lives and then get up these, because there are women on YouTube right now they got a gang of women behind them. And you know what's amazing to me? I'm going to say it, I'm gonna, but I'm going to say it correctly. My thing is this. She says she's season 41. Well, you know what? Good luck to, me, to you, Miko. I'm praying for you. I hope everything works in your favor. The man that marries you is going to be the luckiest man ever. Absolutely, because she's willing. She's willing. Come on, somebody. But we but we, 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 we got to get out of the notion of, we got to get out of the notion of, um, how can I say it? Um, um, being it, I'll go to this. Cynthia G got on and said what she said. Delete all male black babies because that's how you lower crime. You no more pookies and ray rays. No more uh, single mamas if you delete black baby black babies. So and she on. got who who is Cynthia G? Is that the one with the dating like show? The one that be one. having the people uh-huh. come over? Okay, no, I got no, 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 that's not no. That's the one she. That's the one like a half turn werewolf. They got their weave going way down her back, and her edges have left the building and went to Cuba. That's that's who I that know, is. I have to look her up. I don't know her. Yeah, you got to look her up. Yeah, she. But anyway, so she she's saying delete all black babies if you want to lower crime, right? You want to lower crime. You want no Pookie and Ray Rays. You don't want no single moms. Delete all black baby black male babies, and you won't have that problem. Wow. And and look how many supporters she have. Boy, they rah rah on her and celebrating her. But then you come over, secure the boss with your beautiful dark skin, with your hair laid over to the side, dressed up. I think that's half of what it is. Give, give me the close up, Mr. Boss. I be trying it. I be give trying. Us a, give us a close up, Mr. Boss. There it is. That has nothing to do with it. I can help them out in that area too if they need help. Who knows? And, and, and so what's happening is this. <laughs> what's happening is this, guys. Secure, look at this. Security boss is beautiful. She's laid back. She's Thank not you. confrontational. She speaks her mind. She ain't out here cussing. She ain't out here downgrading men. She's telling you that she's been met. She's in a relationship before. She's out of a relationship. A child came out of that relationship out of wedlock. She's telling you the mistakes she's made. And then she's giving you 20 years of work. How in the hell do you not understand that that's something you should cling on to instead of trying to poke holes in it? I'm going to give you the mic back before I say something else. Go ahead. Money line. Money line. I 
Nicole's, that is for you. And thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's see where we are now. So anyway, black man, I, did we have any M Mills? Were you able to, my chat is a little bit off right now, but we'll catch up with that. But black man, I don't know, but I, I get that a lot. You know, we talk about women not listening to other women a lot. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just difficult to hear. Right. Oh, Vaughn said, I heard a wise man say the truth given without love becomes a weapon it is definitely so. So tell me how that applies. Because <laughs> right. I definitely don't want to weaponize anybody. <laughs> and then let's see, I guess people want to follow people that feel they can relate. Um, relate to. Um, OK, but anyway, black man. So anyway, do we as married people judge singles? Mr. Rucker, how are you, sir? I hope you're doing well. And you still on the prenup. You, I hope you got it by now. <laughs> <laughs> we got to spread the prenup knowledge. Okay. The, 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 the prenup, you, you know what? Can't nobody do it better than you. You've been doing an excellent job spreading that. You have done an excellent job. All right. So um, do we, black man, do we judge or do we um, just tell our stories? I, I think we just tell our stories. I think that uh, you, like I said, you yourself, I think that you tell your story, and I think that in today's time, when women are held up, uh, when these stories are being told, they know for a fact that they feel threatened because they know men are listening. And now they're saying, damn, these men know what to look for now, and it ain't me. So I need to find a way to, to destroy this <laughs> before it gets too much inside their psyche. Um, and so when you hear men say, and we've seen this before. When we hear women, when we hear men say on all channels, TJ, unsolicited security boss. When you hear all these, your name being called on these different channels by different men that are saying you guys are the standard, women are thinking, damn, who, are the, who is this woman? Let me go check this lady out. And that's where the hate comes from. That's where it comes from, right there. I'm telling you. You know what? I can't help that. But listen, we got a super chat for Jay, and I don't see his comment yet, but we're going to, uh, here we are. Jay says, um, Jay says, I will say this as one of my fave songs says one of, as one of my fave songs says, don't stop believing. Plus a wise man once said, I can change just about anything, but I can't change human nature. I will hop on once like a drop link. What? <laughs> I will, I will hop on once the link is dropped. Okay. I'm already Money line, going up, need no decline. Money line, I'ma run it every time. Give me mine, going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't use commas, periods, or anything. Y'all just kind of put it all <laughs> together. Listen, Daryl Long says the judge, um, the judgment may come from those who are internally judging themselves, and they fail to hold themselves accountable. I like that. But when people hear your testimonies, they can't help to feel like a loser. I don't know about that. I'm not trying to make anybody feel like a loser. I would prefer people actually take away from me and don't do what I did. I feel as though I'm talking to individuals who haven't gone through as much as I've gone through. I would love to be able to catch ladies and men in their 20s, uh, in their 30s that haven't been married yet, that haven't had a lot of kids or whatever the situation is, and they're just starting out their life, but they want to be married. If they can hear me, then that's who I'm speaking to. Uh, of course, though, if there's a married couple out there, a woman who is married and she feels like there's some stress in her relationship, and I say something to her that just encourages her, like pour into your husband, I want her to hear that too. But I would just love to catch those who haven't yeah. um, exposed themselves to the world so much that, you know. Exactly. That's that's who I'm actually talking to. Yep. So, Paul Bennett, Mr. Bennett, how what you call him, Doctor Bennett? Doctor Bennett, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, Doctor Bennett in the building tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Hope you're doing well. But um, so you don't think that we judge? Okay, now listen, I'm gonna go to this thing about this judgment because I I did last night say something, but I would have said the same thing as a single woman, in my opinion, because I said what I said is um. 
if I was single, I would be saying I want to be covered. I don't want to have to worry about going to a health department anywhere, getting tested for diseases. I don't want to be with a different man every other night or whatever, or, you know, out here by myself. So I said it coming from, you know, a married woman. I don't want that for my life. But is that judgment? Because wait a minute, before you answer that question, black man, let me tell you what we get. We celebrate WAP. We celebrate five to eight inches. Mm. Cele- don't we? We celebrate threesomes, right? That's all we hear about, right? We celebrate, um, oh gosh, what you call it? The what they call it when they hook up? I can't even think of the name of it right now. The new hookup dating, the little hookup thing they do now. My swinging. No, where they go on these dates and they, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, dating a lot of women, dating a lot of men. You know, it's, it's, it's I can't think of it now. But we 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 celebrate. We don't celebrate, but we talk about that kind of culture all the time. And we we celebrate divorce. You're right. We talk about all that stuff. The hookup culture, the the WAP. Who who needs to talk about a WAP? Why would that be okay? Right. Situationships, bro, man. You're right. How about right. this? It's complicated. Mm-hmm. polyamory we, we talk about all this stuff all the time right exactly. but then right when you talk about marriage you gotta it's a problem you know yep. Yep. just because this works for you sneaky links that's what i was trying to them sneaky links wow we, we, we talk about that we, we 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 need to adapt this i need to know what this means why do i need to know what sneaky links mean right why do i need to know what what mean i'm not even interested in that but that's all that's all we have. But I'm if I'm talking about though being intentional with a husband pouring into your husband, uh that ain't you know that that but but fifty percent of marriages don't even work. No, uh, exactly. I'm talking about putting money in one account. Why I got why he got to know what what I'm doing with my money, why I can't have my money it's just ridiculous. Yep. You know, but we have to embrace what, what the single life is like. We have to embrace it. Exactly. But you, they have trouble embracing the married life. Yep. And, and Sir Hill just said it in the, in, the, in the chat so eloquently. He said, happy people are a target. He's absolutely correct. He, listen, the, anti, the anti-social socialite says, security boss is condemning all these individuals. Fun now. All the individuals. Fun. Now I see what the issue is. I'm not <laughs> condemning their fun. I allow them to talk about their fun. I do. I have you. Have you ever heard me say anything about that? Actually, you know what? I had an opportunity to talk to a man who says that, and you're gonna know what I'm talking about, black man. I had an opportunity to talk to a man that says he has a married woman paying for him, but I won't do it because I don't want to promote that. Yeah, you. Yeah, I remember that night. That was wonderful. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't. I don't want to do that. But that's. But isn't it true? Yep. Isn't that what was said? Yep. But I don't want to promote that. I mean, you know. Yes, you <laughs> say he thought what bid for worship and praise. <laughs> for me, it, it, I'm better off with that because that other thing, we need to stop promoting it. And guess what, though? She's a married woman. One of yep. the young ladies. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that I'm against or judge and I don't want to judge anybody. I just think that being married is a more safe place to be. You know, especially for a woman, it's a, it's, it's, I enjoy it. It allows me to be a woman. It allows me to be a lady. It allows me to uh, be in a relationship with my husband, a companionship. Um, I don't need but one. So what is it all about? I mean, you know, what is it all about beyond that? I, is that not what we are here for? I mean, am I, am I supposed to have five husbands? Am I supposed right. to have five men? Is that my goal? Yep. And if you were like that, you wouldn't hear anything from nobody. What you saying? They embrace that? Oh, yeah. If you was on this show right now saying, welcome, I'm security boss. I'm here with Mr. Boss, Mr. Boss number two, Mr. Boss number three, Mr. Boss number four. You know how I like it. Ooh, I'm going to drop it on you tonight, boss number five. You know, Mr. Boss number seven. I like you too. If you did a show like that, they'd be like, oh, log in. You have a thousand people watching right now. No, don't, don't, you got, don't leave out the most important part. We all sleep together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got yeah. to put the most important part in there because you know you yeah. got to make it. You got to make it scandalous. You can't just yeah. do that. you got to all sleep together. Then have people talking about now one after the other. Yeah, I was like, why are y'all say it? Well, who cares? Yeah, all together. 
Oh, <laughs> gotta, hey girl, next week you gotta go on Security Boss page. Next last week, girl, she's talking about all her and all her men together. All her husband, they all sleep together. Yeah, yep. that's scandalous. They would love that, right? Oh, yeah, love that. <laughs> Man, your page will blow up. I know, I know, but I ain't got time for that. I'm, I don't have time for that. I'm trying to be positive. And, and like I said last night when we were getting uh, at the end of Sir Hill's show, I don't know if you were still there or not. I think you were when I talked about fear. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Have, I have a fear of living incorrectly. Yep. Um, I don't want to be caught in the midst of a sin and taken out of here. Exactly, I agree. <laughs> so I always want to be on the left side of being halfway right. So that's why I do and say what I say. And a lot of times I think when I'm, I'm expressing myself to people, uh, they just don't understand that I actually care about them. And, you know, although they want me to have empathy, some things I don't empathize with because I know it's a simple thing. It's simple to say I'm not doing it anymore. You know, there was a time when I went clubbing from Thursday to Sunday. I was doing it Thursday to Sunday, but it came a time and I was like, I don't want to do this no more. Dearly beloved. And I stopped, you know, I had. And that's the thing. You got the track record for saying. I'm not saying that I'm talking that that would be talking down on them, speaking as if you were perfect and you've never done anything wrong. But no. you're being transparent with your mistakes. You're being transparent with the life you live before you got married. You're transparent about having a child out of Whitlock and then getting married. You're transparent about everything. So how is it condescending? Lord, help me. She didn't say it was condescending. She said it may be. Emil yeah. says it may because she said she may have. I'm assuming Emil's might have been accused of that when she was married, also. So, so she can relate. But I right. really want her to tell us more about that because she's of a particular age, also. So I would accept that from her. Anything that she has to offer on that, because I do want to reach people. I think people are not religious these days. Um, no, but it doesn't. Does it take? I mean, I'm not advocating for religions because that's just that's just a way of worshiping. You got to believe what you worship. You know, I could tell you not to wear red fingernail polish, but is that going to get you closer to heaven? No. You know, so they seem to forget that uh, we're young. We were young. I know. Oh, gee, they think we've been, I met my husband in a nightclub. I've said that too, having a, <laughs> a million times. I don't know what else you can do. You, I, I don't either, but I listen, I'm willing because um, I do, like I said, I want to get the message out because I happen to think that marriage is the place to be. It, you know, I'm not saying you got to do it my way. You do right. not have to do it my way, but this is where I, I'm good, you know, and you may be good too, not being not married. I can't say that to you, but individuals may be good being single. I'm just saying, I think they would be better being married. But uh, again, that's the individual situation, but please don't stop me want me to shut up because you're not feeling the way that I'm feeling. Right. And then you yeah. have that my that my pillow syndrome. Uh, <laughs> that my pillow syndrome. Everybody, everybody talks about, you know, oh I girl, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put my money together. I wouldn't do this. And then you have women on here that have their own channels that preach this stuff and say, we don't need men. We independent. We can do what we want to do when we want to do it, how we want to do it. We're going to do it this way. And then as soon as they get off, they then already encourage you to leave your man or not be with your man. And as soon as they get off, the only thing keeping them warm is that my pillow up between their legs. That's it. Clutcher House says it's a combination of two things. One involves how we. Um, a, a, what? Acculturated. It, how we and, were acculturated. OK, OK, OK. Uh, how we were acculturated. Yeah. <laughs> and two, and the next generation are a different breed. Generational okay. differences are real. Yeah, they show. you right about that, partner. Because um, now we're in a generation now, they don't believe in nothing. They don't listen to nobody. They don't listen. They don't uh-uh, listen black man. I think, I think we were the same way. I, I'm, I, I'm going to speak for myself. I was still 25 at 25. I was 21. and tw- I was still that person then, too. How did you come out of it? I don't. I can't say how I came out of it. I just did. There was came a time. Let me say it again. There came a time when. I didn't want to go to the club anymore. I was done with it. I mean, maybe it was simple as I grew up. I just decided this is not what I wanted to do anymore. I don't I don't remember anything happening, if right. that's what you're looking for. Right. Did, did, um, you, are you surprised that there are women your age still acting like you was when you was 25? Yeah, I'm very surprised by that. And I don't even really know. Wh- how would you evaluate that, though? Why are you saying that? Because there, there, there are women out here. I'm not going to say all, but some 
that are 55, 56, 54 years old, and they're still teaching against what you're saying right now. And they're also considered elders, right, to some people. And so you have some women preaching that to women as well, and they respect those elders for what they're saying too. So they're taking counsel from these, a lot of women are taking counsel from these women as well. But I then so that's two different things for me. I think one would be that is a learned behavior from a mother or, or a grandmother. You know, we talked about that, that generational thing where they hate men. Remember, I told you my mom wasn't too fond of men, but she stayed married to her death. But right. then the other part would be a lot of those women, I think, probably have already been married for a large portion of the first part of their lives. And they're now just getting to the point where they feel like it's time for them to live. I hear a lot of times I'm living now once their kids get of age, they're right. saying now that I'm going to live a little, you know, and it's sad because they don't know it's a diff. It is a difference because they don't know what's out there, you know, and then they they get out there and they start playing around with it and they get, get exposed to things that they're not used to. Exactly. So, you know, <sighs> I don't know about that back then. I don't know when, when I was 21, I mean, I did just as what, just the same as what these doing, what they do now, especially when you go to college and you do certain things. I mean, come on. I, I don't see the difference in that, in that part, but besides the access to computers and more men, because you know, everything is right there, right. but we, we still did what we did. I mean, and we still was immature and we didn't know everything, you know, we didn't. So we still made mistakes. Right. Um, now, a major difference maybe is because I did grow up in the church, you know, so I was exposed to that most of my life. And, you know, maybe they're not. But, you know, you know, by what age are you to be considered an elder? I have no idea. These people be calling me elders. <laughs> I didn't ask for that. It's an honest question for me too, about a black man. What age are you to be considered an elder? Any, any, anyone. That uh, for me, uh, well, biblically, and if the Bible says that an elder is someone that is uh, over the age of 50 who requires the knowledge and wisdom uh, to be able to um, to fulfill pro prophecy. Well, not prophecy, but pro fulfill uh, wisdom to people. So wisdom. like you, you've been through it. You can't go to an elder at 23 because they've only been here 23 years. Right. So you're you're you only promise. Uh, three score and 10 in the Bible. So you only promise what, 70 years. So anything over 50 would be considered an elder. So you, and, and a person that has wisdom like you do 20 years in 20, over 20 years in a marriage. Um, you have all these different experiences. You've done everything that uh, some of these people out here have done and you, you're able to use it in a positive light. You're able to feed it to people. So listen, M. Mills, the um, link is in the chat. So I hope you go ahead and click on it because I would love to talk to you. Um, Antisocial, I don't want to call her antisocial, but that's a nice name. Antisocial Socialite says, um, SB uh, keeps, let me see, let me get it back up there. SB means well, people, means well, people have to see her heart behind the words. Yep. <laughs> Are the words wrong? Nope. <laughs> I got to work on this thing, y'all. I just I have always been that person to say exactly what it is. So if it's wrong, I, I'm taking your advice. I want to hear more from M. Mills, too, because she's going to give me some because she's a she's a woman of a certain age. And I'm going to listen to her. She's been here longer than I have a little bit, but we're around the same age. So I want to hear from her, you know, because we want to cre create better relationships. I, I want to create better relationship amongst women. Um, and if it keeps them or helps them meet those gentlemen that they want to meet, then I want to help. I want them to listen to me. Hello, Dr. Panderson. How are you doing today? Good evening. All is well. Thank are you, you scam likely today? Uh, I got so many names that. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Panderson, how are you doing, brother? All is well. But security boss, thank you for all that you do. Black thank man, you. appreciate uh, Friday night. Appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, I was I was boiling, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw you in the comments. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Panderson, before you do that, Jay, how are you doing tonight? Your mute button, the little button on the back, brother. They got you again. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. It was actually it was actually the button. It wasn't this this time. Oh, had, okay, okay. What's going I, on? My I guy? kept it muted. How you guys doing? What's up? Doing man? good. How are you? Hey, Talk Hill. Oh, 
re, uh, a lot of cleaning, redirect, uh, redecorating, and a lot of um, marinating today. So, you know, mm, try to get off the relationship. Try to try to spend a few days to be off the relationship titles because it can get nauseating sometimes of just the same thing. Even though I know it's a major problem that's happening now. I know Dr. Patterson, but let's be real. If I hear the same thing being said over and over again, it's like a broken record to me. So I agree. it's kind of like. So I'm saying I'm saying it's not plaguing me like it plagues other people because, you know, they might need it more than I do because I already know what I have to do. But it doesn't mean that I can't hear the points that I hear differently because I'm just trying to hear different things. I don't want to hear the same echo chamber of, of stuff because to me it, because to me now it's gotten to the point. Everybody's saying the exact same thing. I haven't heard anything new. I'd have to go out of America to hear something completely different. <laughs> that's that's what that's how it is. So. I mean, I'm hearing what you're saying, and I'm hearing what my man Black Man Unfiltered, when people don't want to listen. I've heard that argument, too. People don't want to listen. I think they're incapable of listening. That's what, that's it right there. I'm just going to say it just to save everybody to figure out what the problem is. They're incapable of listening. And so, but other, what do you think the, about the people that want to hear you? They'll listen to you. But so what about the topic? What about the topic? Do you think that married people judge single people? Do I think they judge, judge them? Yeah. To some extent, yes. Tell us about it, if you can. The reason, okay, I can tell you, man. Um, I actually have, like I said, two brothers. Um, now they don't judge more often than not. They don't judge, but my best friend, she does. She judge, she judges uh any all her female friends, of course. You know how it is. I don't even get into that, but what she, she just likes to let me in on what she says, and then she tells me like, well, you know, they're complaining such and such. They can't do things such and such. And I'm like, okay, let me ask you this. If you really cared about, if you, you know, if they really cared about the things that you were telling them, they would have done it right now. They would have made the change, mm. you know, to better suit the lifestyle that they want. I mean, actual, you know, be together with somebody. And, and she says, well, well, brother, I think they're incapable of that. And I'm like, mm. if you think they're incapable, then just, I had to say it. You had to drop them like a bag of flies. Seriously. Because it means because it means that they're so caught up in their pigheadedness in order to not listen, because they believe that they're following a trend that's going to get them somewhere, and in actuality, it's leading to a path of a lot of depression and misery. So, and and I told her, and and I, I followed by telling her, well, guess what? If they really wanted to change, they would listen to you. They would actually, you know, your actual. I have to say role model, you're the you're the blueprint, I guess. Mm. That's a perfect blueprint because it right. might be for everybody, but you're a blueprint of what to look for, of how to exactly. be ladylike, how to how to you know how to garner that room of attention for the man in order to be with them, in order to know how a relationship works. Like right. how you work in conjunction with your guy is different from mm. how the guys they've been with because they don't work, they fight against. So I mean, that was that was just one of the many conversations that me and her had, and I and I, and I just told her, I'm like, you can only do so much before they become a brick wall, right? And I, and I and, but but she was trying though on Social Security Boss. I'm not coming at my friend. I said she was trying. So she listen, trying. this this, this kind of goes to this. It says um, anti-socialite says I don't see married people supporting singles enough in my experience. Hmm. Black man, what do you think about that? Um, I want to ponder a little bit. So um, she said, I don't see married people supporting singles enough in my experience. Right. So I would want to know more details in it about supporting them in what? Right. Well, <laughs> I can imagine that she's saying um, with the conversations mm -hmm. or, or with the questions, but I'm not going to speak for her. I'm going to let her if she definitely can um, come up and let us know. But I'm going to go to Dr. Penderson for now. Yeah, I was going to wait on let Miss Mills go first. Oh, okay. Is she there? You ready? Miss Mills is right there, yeah. Okay, I see her now. Miss Mills, how are you? Thank you so much for coming up. Well, not coming up, but coming up. Can you hear me? See, I don't think she's there. <laughs> huh? I don't, I didn't, oh. She's not there. I'll go ahead. Oh, okay. The okay, wait, wait. Somebody else says, uh, Jay, how is that judging? I'm not seeing it. He's uh, okay, so, she, go ahead. 
Yeah, I would say this because because like there were some things because she was looking at it from like a perfectionist would because I can't believe can't believe I'm about to say the words that's about to come out of my mouth. She considered herself to be perfect a little bit in some way and a little bit of arrogance, but every every little treat that they like, she judges them for it. But because they haven't had the proper training, but also they're not they're not receptive to learning in a sense. So she is judging every little criteria that they do not do or cannot fulfill. And it comes off as judging. That's what she does. Now, granted, I mean, that's how she is, but she does do that to them more often than not. Now, I'm not, now I'm not saying, I'm not taking out a side because I personally, because me, I have no dog in the fight. Right. But, but how she, how she laid it out for me, they came off as judging like a, like a lawyer or I guess like a judge more often than not. So that's how she would do it. Like their little courts, their little um, little uh, negatives that they have. She judges all of that. So she so she wouldn't generation. give any. And she, she points it out any, to them. Okay, so she yeah. wouldn't give any um, acknowledgement to the things that they're doing correct. Yes. Oh well, okay. I noticed uh, that when she said that, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, so there's nothing. They haven't done one positive thing that you can name out. No, it was wow. all negative. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> M. Mills, are you, I got gotcha. you. I see now. M. Mills, can you hear me? She's probably muted. M. Mills, if you can hear me, try to go in through Chrome. If you go in through Chrome, you should be able to get through the app. And uh, Antisocial Socialite uh, answered our question. She said about marriage. You see it? Because I don't. Yeah, you she goes all the way back up. Oh, she when we she uh to get married. So get she married. asked the question. Most black people would uh oh let me back up a little bit. She said I don't see married people supporting singles no. in my experience. And then she right. answered, and when we asked her a question, uh, and in what she said to get married. Oh, you know what though? Um, I'm gonna have to agree with her on that because uh we're here, but no one's listening. Um, I offer you know to ladies all the time. If you have any questions, you want to come up and cam up and talk or whatever, just hit me on my DMs or whatever. You just have a question. And there are ladies that do. I have ladies uh, saying stuff like I need help on how to actually clean a house. I want to have that kind of discipline and order so I can make sure I'm doing that good as a wife. So there are some that are asking questions, but not a lot. Most people are just uh, most ladies are not asking any questions. The men, though, the men are commenting. They're asking, you know, well, how did you do this? How did that work? You know, you know, how did you know that he was the one or, you know, how does it feel to be with your husband all day? You know, they ask questions. Men do. But women, uh, some, but not a lot, not a lot. And I'm no, I'm no counselor. So it would have to be something that sticks out in your mind that you heard me say that may or may not work for you. And you're right about this, though. I would like to speak more to people pre-marriage versus the ones that are already married but that is good too because i would have loved to have somebody help me along in the midst of my troubles and say you know what you could do this and make it easier so or you know relate some of the things that i did go through to what someone may be going through so it works both ways but you have to actually um you have to search for that help because there's so many people against marriage right now somebody would tell you to leave i heard somebody last night say i'll tell them to leave and okay. I thought that was strange. I think I would never tell somebody to divorce their husband. That's crazy. Me. I wouldn't do that. I would say protect yourself, but to say, to boldly say leave, that's big. It is big. That can change a lot of people. It's big. That's it's really big. big. I wouldn't do that. I, I, it's just, it's just so serious, though. You know, it's a serious situation. I wouldn't be in that position to do that. So, um, Dr. Panderson, where are you at now? Uh, all is well. Um, on the topic, I was going to say, um, are married people judgmental? I don't believe they're judgmental. Um, something that I've seen, like I can even say from my own life, my parents got married in 76. They were 17 and 19. They have no clue what actually going out and seeking a spouse is. None. And that was my immediate guidance. Then it was other married couples around. So when I turned 18 and went in the Army, I saw disaster marriages. Then I come back and I go to college and I'm thinking two to one ratio with females. I'm good. 
And I go see, guy, you know, came along some ladies. I'm, you know, women didn't want relationships. And the married people told me to go out there and simp. What does that mean? Tell me what, when they say hmm? go out, I know your parents didn't say go out there and simp. Not exactly. What, but, what did uh, they say? Let me hear what they said. I'm more like, okay, there's a girl in the class, talk to her, whatever. Try harder. Go after her, son. Okay, well, she ain't returning no calls. Go harder. Do more. Okay, but she still ain't, you know, sat on the phone, listening to her sob story for two hours, still stuck on an ex. Well, if you love her more, you go harder. I'm like, they never told me. Um, and I've never been no weak person. They, they weren't guiding me. Like, look, stand on your purpose, stand on your ground. You're a man, lead these women. And actually, it was pulling me out of my natural character. I wasn't even a simp, but that's what they said. We got results. We're married. This is what you go do. They had no clue on dating. And what they knew was from, from in the 70s and the 80s. So now, the same thing. My sister, married 20-something years. She's 21. She had a son who's 16. And she tried to tell him about dating and talking. And, and say, yeah, you need to understand his world. It's 2022 is not 2000. No, that's not him. It sound like him. Yeah. Okay. Things have changed. And everyone is aware they did not get better. Now, we accept this and we go and try to be better men to find out how to be husbands and whatever. But we now understand these women were not taught to be wives. And the men weren't necessarily taught to be husbands. Red pill space is telling people, get on your money. Or whatever they're not t saying anything about emotional intelligence they're not talking about actual honesty integrity and good character it's just money attracts women big money high value okay what about your character how you communicate how you actually value your a lot of stuff is there's some dark holes not being taught and people are seeking information and they're missing stuff um i don't well, think know, i think there's too much information don't you i mean what happened to just organically meeting a woman liking her and dating her um the people are changing <sighs> like they men and women are all over the place there was no in 19 in 2005 there wasn't a channel of the angered woman send you know <laughs> 90,000 followers <laughs> people are injecting this stuff in their veins I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I shouldn't you. laugh, but you know, he's right. Place. There's probably <laughs> six or eight channels. That's what's out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go into the weight, but let's just say food and other things. We don't need to do this. We can come out here any kind of. I'm not going to really go into it because I've been killing it. But the <laughs> thing is, problems too. Then there's so many, many. There's men on this thing called MIG time. We're saying we're going to throw away marriage. Don't ever get married. But we're going to come out here and date it. I'm like, so if you throw away marriage, don't want it, you've already excluded the few wives that are out here. Yeah. So now you're going to go out here mad, miserable, trying to date the same women that you've been complaining about for the last 10 years. What do you so do you believe that some of this uh, chaos that we do listen to has caused all that trauma that you're going through when dating these women? Like, if you didn't hear that, these women would have gotten or you would have gotten much farther along with those women if you wouldn't have heard all that negativity. Uh, who, me? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I mean, not necessarily you, but I'm talking about if someone is putting something negative into your ear about me, pretty soon it's going to start penetrating you and you're going to maybe start looking at me a little bit side eye, even though you hear me. Even though you hear me saying something different, you still might start looking at me a little bit different. Like, I wonder, I bet she do this. Is she going to be 300 pounds? You know? Not that it's, understand that, um, okay, in the 80s, we growing up, 80s, 90s, there was a little bit of church and community left. Yeah. Actual people you can trust. Gotcha. 2000s, when the pastors and ever went crazy, now no one trusts anyone anymore. And there is no safe ground to go to to find trust and find actual conversation. Gotcha. When YouTube came, there's people flocking to it for right reasons, wrong reasons, or unable to handle certain information. Okay. Um, but why do you why do you embrace it as being safe? What do you mean safe? Why do I embrace what is being safe? What those teachings are here, the things you're hearing, why are you embracing it as being safe or even talking points or even things that you should live by? Why are you embracing it to be safe? No, I didn't. I didn't say that they were safe. I'm saying people are seeking to form 
I'm saying. People are looking for a form of safety. They go to church. Okay, something's wrong. I'm going to church. The pastor coddles to them. Now that trust is burnt. They don't know where to go. Some of them are running into YouTube looking for safety. Right. Okay. Um, I got you. That's right. what you're saying. This right. coming to YouTube looking for safety. Okay. Right. And a lot of people take the information and inject it into their veins. Right. In the house, they don't talk to nobody, and they just make this some of this their Bible. Right. Okay. Um, but then I don't know what's going to happen because they're going to get mad and get burnt on that too. So, so <laughs> okay. To you and Black Man and Filter, somebody like me knows from the base, from the, the baseline that y'all come in good faith. And that's always to be respected. Even if the information were wrong, but you're, you come in good faith, you have the results, and we can see why you have the results by how you speak and how, how you communicate. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that, brother. So um, we have a couple of others that need to come up in Mills. I hope you got that together and you can come up through Chrome. But for now, I'm going to say hello to Mel and Ghost in the Machine. How are you? Yeah, you can put me in the back. I'm going to slide off, but I'm still okay. in the background. Okay. Thank can you. everybody hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? I am just fine. Good evening to you all. God, I've been listening to the, the program, listening to the video, and I have a couple of different things that I'd like to discuss. First of all, if you recognize this background, you talked to my wife last night. You and Sir Hill talked to my wife last night. Mika is my wife. Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Okay. Mika in the chat. Hello. What's going on, yeah, my guy? Good to meet you. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did, yeah. man. Yeah. She um, uh, if you see the initials MRA down in the chat, that means moving right along. So she's telling me I'm getting too wordy. So oh, Lord. <laughs> she's like my, she's <laughs> like my referee. Mika, he yes. only said five things. <laughs> she yes, knows Mika. I get on the road. <laughs> so you move it right along. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, it's nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, yes. man. You as well. You as well. It's nice to meet all of you guys. All you guys just chatting. All you guys just watching this and not saying anything. I'm happy to meet all of you. Listen, you spoke earlier about how old you have to be to be an elder. Mm. And my tagline for my channel is y'all gonna respect my elder. I will be okay. 60 years old. This year, okay. you'll be how old? 60. Sixty, dude. You, I, dude, I swear to God, you're like a 23 year old DJ, brother. I swear, I'm oh. giving you that right now. <laughs> okay, why you gotta be a DJ? Help, because he, because he, I am. Because he got the headphones on right now, oh, standing in front of the mic. I so I, I just use what I have. I oh, he said, but he is though. He's a DJ though. <laughs> you a DJ for real? So it makes sense. That, see, I, man, I didn't know that. See, <laughs> all my life for like 40 years. Okay, so I like called that. it. <laughs> yeah, you did. But in any event, but we get too far afoot, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do come across as judgmental to today's society. And let me tell you why. Okay. There are differences between our generation and their generation. They are young enough to be not maybe some of our grand grandkids, but at least our older to mid age kids. Okay. So they learned that from us. They got all of that from us. And you have to understand how we got it. We got it in a way that we used to look at our parents and say, she judged better. Why you got to say it like that? You can't talk to me no better than that because we're young. We haven't fully formed up here. We don't have the emotional what's the word elasticity to be able to take information extract what i can out of it and leave the rest alone they don't have that that's the way our parents gave it to us but this is a difference like you were talking about information overload yes they have they are being bombarded from all directions in a way that we never were yeah we go back to Black Planet, MySpace. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> there was no Telegram. There was no Clubhouse. There was no YouTube. Oh, wow. There was You're no Vine, no TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Keep it going. <laughs> you know exactly the yes. point I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. So there are so many people out there 
with misinformation that they want to give these kids, they really don't know what's true. And there's one more point that I want to make, too. And this kind of deals with this particular situation, but it also goes back to what you guys were talking about on Sore Hill last night. You got to understand our generation, those people who were born between, say, 1960 and 1975, our parents were the one that left the, agri the agricultural South and came to the factories in the North. OK, we went from a largely agrarian society to a uh, work in the factory, industrial mm. type of lifestyle. Inside the, uh, the concrete cities with bad air, bad water, excessive police presence, you name the ill, we had it in the hood in the north. Now, our children, they are doing better than we are. They just don't recognize what they have. But none of us, I don't think anybody on this panel still live in the projects. I don't think that anybody on this panel still live on the quote unquote bad part of town because that's not something that you do when you're trying to raise a family you want your family to be safe so you move your family as close to safety as you can perceive mm. you know when we came up we didn't have to worry about the police beating us up like that we did but it wasn't on camera now <laughs> It would seem that they have gotten even more violent since they started wearing cameras. But that's a whole nother thing. But these kids, they have come up in a situation that's so far removed from what we came up under that a lot of our lessons bounce off of them because we don't listen to them. We don't try and talk to them. We try and guide them. But that guidance comes across as coercion. So we as the bigger people the older people the more wise people we got to make that much and more effort to go toward them than they come toward us mm. now that i do agree with but i got a question sure not for you i want you to answer the question jay do you agree with ghost the machine i do agree with what he was saying Cause I remember, I remember the time when we, I'm a 91 kid. So I remember the whole MySpace thing, like the time where we didn't have certain, there were certain things in the internet that we didn't even have at the time. And it was just a matter of you walking up and going to talk to people is, is what we, is what I still do to this day. But now it's becoming more of a lost art. Like what he's saying, it's just like, we've just gotten away from it. And it's just like, well, be, be complicated, be, just be moral and just, you know, just act like a fool. And I'm, and it, it's just sad. So go to the machine. It makes a lot of great points. And I'm, I'm agreeing with them. On and the how old are you? How old are you, Jay? I am 30. I'll be 31 this year. So that was why I asked him that. So he can relate it to exactly what you're saying. Mika says, talk in, talk in the way they understand, learning their language. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, did she mean, hold on, wait, did, did she mean the language of the new generation or old generation? No. New, new, new. I don't know if I agree with that, but I can listen to anything. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and listen, I'm not. And listen, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to shoot his sister's idea down. But what I'm saying is, um, for that, that's that's going to be hard. Because Curry Boss just said it too. I I don't know what language they're speaking nowadays. I hear like parts of like torn up. English that don't make any sense to me, and I'm just like, is this not how I was taught how to speak? And and I, and I feel like a hard time. It's like trying to trans, like I need like a translator to try to understand what they're trying to say, and it's not yeah. easy. So scam likely is saying adaption is important, and it is, but we still got to speak English because I don't know if I even agree with just making up words. I mean. You know, yeah, I agree with that. Whole thing, language changes. I don't know if I can agree with that because that 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 right. that can change every day. Yep. You know, they they add something new to the urban dictionary almost every day. You're seems right. like. And I'm thinking they can say really back and negative and make it into a new language that is positive and stuff. Because a lot of these languages, words that they use, like bay, 
everything. You look up the original definition of Baden or the B-A-A-E definition, it means actually mm-hmm. hope in Danish. <laughs> I'm at, and they calling the people, that's my bae, that's my bae. So technically, I'm calling my lover Danish poop. Like, oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, you Danish. would come up with that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, like, yeah, you so, know. Yeah. There's a whole lot more words than that, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, she said not the way, not not talk the way they talk, just understand what they're saying. Okay, I think that's what she's saying. Okay. Okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. That's very good. Exactly. That was very good. And I have one more point I make because I know Miss Mills wants to say anything. Say say something because she's just not got in, but I want to say one more thing though. The thing about language is, is language is a two way street and I can be I can be correct 110 percent of the time. But if I'm speaking to you in Japanese, ain't none of y'all going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you right about that. I speak that language. That's, just, that's it. That's all. That's the reality <laughs> that's of the situation. I that talk to it. these yeah. kids all the time. But then again, I'm an old cat that came with a different skill set. I've always been in the computers. Back to when they go went all the way back to mainframes and hollerith cards. I've always been in the computer. so I I can meet them a lot of places that you guys may not, you know. And yeah. when I talk to them and they speak a certain way, I can understand what they mean. Plus, coming from my 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 years of retail management, I was hiring these people, and I <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. Every person yep. I ever hired was a black person, a black youngster. <laughs> but that's just the way it was. These are Fortune 500 companies. Yep. And you have to be able to understand because if don't nobody open the door for them, where they going to go? Right. You're right. You see what I'm saying? Who's going right to teach them? That. But if you open a door for them and you listen to what they're saying, they'll listen to you. And a lot of us got that problem. Not saying anybody on this particular panel but a lot of people have that problem. Pastors, counselors, therapists, YouTube stars, a lot of them got the wrong idea about talking to these kids. And you know what, Ghost in the Machine, if I could say something to that as well. Now, I remember growing up and my grandfather was very, I mean, just very influential in my life. And um, and for my graduation, they bought me this nice, I, I remember it too. It was a nice Dodge Durango, black on black, just nice for my graduation and you know being young and stupid um you know 17 years old driving the truck 110 miles an hour going around kurt just ignorant um yeah, and, I took it, it. and i tore it up and i, I mean i tore it, i mean i didn't have it six months it was total out and my and my grandfather and my grandmother came at me differently my grandmother she she loves jesus but my grandfather loves jesus too but he takes breaks and so, <laughs> and so, right. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so, what my grandfather would do is he he took me in the truck one day, and he said, "We all, me and your grandmother, got together, and we've been working a long time, son. We wanted the best for you, and we bought you this truck." And he said, "But come go with me, right? Let's go riding." So I go riding, and he pull up in the wrecking yard, you know, in the wreckers yard, and. And we pull up to the truck. He said, look at that right there. He said, it was a dumb, stupid, ignorant fool that wrecked that truck. <laughs> right? And and he said, you know, and you are not going to appreciate nothing until you buy it on your own. So when we get that insurance from that truck, we're not buying you another one. You're going to buy your own, right? As I got older, I said, man, he just judged me. I can't make mistakes. But as <laughs> I got older and something happened to me, and now that I got my own daughter that age, now I'm saying, damn, granddaddy was on to something, right? It's not, what it, it really hits you and it doesn't matter how he gave it to me. It doesn't matter how vulgar it may have been, right? Because my grandma was like, baby, we, we love you. We know the Lord is so good and wonderful and merciful, you know, And but we ain't gonna buy you another one. You know, she was loving, but I told you, my granddad was different and I got it two different ways. But when you get older, those things sink in. You one day it'll just hit you. You be like, "Dang, that's what Grandma was talking about." Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't think about how they gave it to you. You just think about the fact that they gave it to you. Right. So listen to this comment, um, Aaron. Aaron, thank you for this comment. He says, "Older generations had to adjust to your generation, and they complained too, but they had to. That's just advancements." Yes. 
All right, Aaron. Aaron, we've talked a long time. When well, not a long time, but we had a good exchange, I think. So, thank you so much for that comment. So, um, Ghost the Machine. Did you have anything else you want to add before we go to M Mills? Uh oh. Oh, did he go? I. I think he went. He went. M Mills, how are you, ma'am? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can. How are you oh, doing? Hey, hey, hey! Good to finally get up here. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I know what you oh, mean. you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, what I was wanting to elaborate on with the comment that I made about sometimes we can sound condescending. Yes, ma'am. And I mean, it's just any of us can sound condescending, and. You don't realize it because your security, you do that for a living. I'm former military, so mm -hmm. I can kind of hear it mm -hmm. because I'm former military and I come from authority. So when you're talking and you're relating your point, what you don't realize is almost like you're saying this way is the right way and um, I don't care what you think. This is the right way. Okay. And for some people, especially younger people, I have a 34 year old daughter. So especially for younger people, this tends to turn them off. And so they will just stop listening to anything you got to say. It, it'll get to a point where it's like, OK, I didn't like what you said. or I don't like how you said it. So then it's like they turn it off. So they're not even hearing everything that you're saying because they're no longer receptive. So that was what I was um, talking about Thank in, you. In, in that in that instance. Thank you for that. And you're exactly right. My profession does put me mm -hmm. in a very authoritative position and I work with men <laughs> mm -hmm. every day. And my whole life has had that that a certain amount of discipline into it. Um, that's who I am. It really has been. So what do you do? Uh, can you help with that? Because you were in the military, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So how did you I do? So how did you I get do. how did you get past it? Or do you still what do you do? Uh, it, it still comes sometimes. I'm a manager, so it does feel sometimes I have to realize I can't talk so strong. OK, uh, you know, and I'm like you in the military. I was around mostly men. Mm -hmm. um, but I do realize that I just I try to be careful when I talk to people um, to just try not to be so strong. And then I have no problem with if I think about it and I start thinking, you know what, maybe I was a little bit too hard like that. Then I'll come back and apologize. And I say, you know what? I hope you didn't um, take it this way. And if you did, I apologize. And most of the times they'll tell me, oh, no, I didn't take it that way. But yeah. it's just I just try to keep my spirit open. Um, and then that way I try to be receptive to kind of feel if I'm offending. That's good. But does, can I tell this? Does that? And, and this mm -hmm. is your question. Hey, Ms. Mills, how are you doing? Good to see you, Sugar. Hey, you. How you doing? So, sure. so, so um, <laughs> I, my, my, my question is this. Doesn't that, in a way, because growing up, I was a firm believer because I received a lot of it and it was very helpful and influential in my life uh, about everybody. Because there was a, when I was growing up, there was a village, right? There was grandmother, yeah. grandfather, mom, dad, aunties, uncles, neighbor. Mr. Billy that fixed cars down on the corner, right? So everybody will help you keep you accountable. But doesn't that take away what you're saying is oh, it's okay. But what I'm saying, doesn't that take away an element of tough love? Because sometimes it's necessary. It, it is, but you have to choose the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Everything is not going to be a battle. You don't have to go to battle about everything. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I even had to learn as being a mother. When my daughter was a certain age, like once she reached like about 12 years old, you know, you're right at that cusp where you're you're not a little kid, but you're not a teenager yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to discover that as well, that everything didn't have to be a battle. I didn't have to battle with her about everything. 
You know, we just, the most important things when it came down to respect, um, you're going to listen to me when I tell you, when I direct you, um, you're going to talk to me in a respectful way. But other than that, I realize you don't have to battle about everything. You can just state your opinion. Um, you can provide um, some assistance or some guidance and then just back off and leave it alone. Okay. That's all you got to do. And I, I can tell you right now, I grew up with an Indian circle face grandmother, okay? <laughs> and she was really good about telling you what she thought. And then she would tell you she didn't care whether you liked it or not. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So I know all about it. But then I also realized, too, that sometimes by coming so strong, it kind of it, it makes people not want to listen to you. As an adult, as I got older, and as I became a mother, I was more receptive and I understood more what she was trying to tell me. But see, though, some of those lessons, if maybe it hadn't been so hardcore, then I probably would have been more receptive and I would have really listened to it at a, at a younger age. So, so that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you're so bad. Because you yeah. don't want to, you don't want to repel people. You want to draw, mm -hmm. just like any time when you're in ministry, you don't want to beat people over the head with the Bible. Uh -huh. You want to draw. You want to draw the person. You want to draw them. You don't want. You don't want to repel them, because then they're not listening to anything you have to say. Right, and 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 I was just about to say ministry. So me and you are are, are, are abundant mm -hmm. here because when it comes to ministry. If we take a look at the word in the Bible, and I'm not gonna have a Bible study right now, but we could do that another day. But if, but oh if we, yeah, you know, I would love to do that. But but right. even in the word, the word is very direct, and it is very straightforward. It ain't beating around the bush, it, and it's almost uh, if the, if most preachers preach the Bible like the Bible reads, then yes, people will be like, man, that's so judgmental, right? Because the word is is strong. It it's, it, it it delivers it in a way. Um, that says, I mean, even if, if you really want to go look at it, the book of Proverbs is the mm -hmm. book that, that I would like to go to the most, right? When it says it is better to eat steak, I mean, better to eat fruit with someone you love than a steak with someone you hate. It is better to sleep mm -hmm. on the rooftop of your house than inside the house with a quarrelsome woman, with a, a crazy woman, basically, mm -hmm. in this day and time, right? You know, yes. so all these different things that if you go through Proverbs, Proverbs break those scriptures down. You know, it, uh, uh, a good woman is a crown to her husband's head, but a bad woman is is uh, cancer to his bones, and all this stuff. You know, and, and if you say this to say this to people, people will get offended. But that Bible is very direct in what it means and what it says, because I think it wants the message not to be. Uh, 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 I don't think it wants to have the word to have a great have it watered down, right? Yeah, a great no, area watered down. Water down. Well, the you know the exactly. word is supposed to be with urgency because you're supposed to be paying attention. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's why that's, yeah. that's the point I'm making. Um, listen, uh, hold on for M Mills. Can you stay there for just a minute, Jay? Oh, I'm sure. Have to, yeah. Have to um, let you go down because I want to get money line of business up here. I and Mel, Mel, you have the topic. What would you want to add to it right now, sir? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was something I was just thinking about. about you know, when Turn your mic up a little bit, if you don't mind, brother. Please don't forget. Oh Lord, Mel. Mel, are you telling your age right now? Huh? Can you hear are me? You your there age? you go. Go ahead. Oh, no. Can you hear me clear? Yes. Okay. Hey, I put the mic close to my mouth. Um, I was just, I was just thinking about you know something that you know black man was saying about you know I was, you tell me you have to tell the truth and stuff, so, but like you know black man and Mel, you know telling the same truth but different ways. I have an old saying I always say in this space. It's not who, who says it or how it's said. It's the fact that it was said. And that's how the truth is. It doesn't matter if you say it with kindness or love or it doesn't matter if you say it with authoritarian straight. It's how the person going to perceive it anyway. And tr people don't like the truth. And, so, and sometimes you still got to tell them no matter how you got to say it. You got to tell, tell the truth. Some people, like, you know, reality, when things get better, you got to tell you know, unsatisfying, uncomfortable truth. Vaughn Bryan, put that um put that comment in the chat again about the truth, please. Mm -hmm. Um 
this Vaughn had a comment early. I'm gonna let him put it in the chat again. I hope he can hear me and put that in the chat again for us. But you're right about that. But if but you can you can give truth with honey and it may be received much better. But I do understand if your head is begin is getting ready to be cut off, you might not care about how it's coming. So I do understand what you're saying. Right. Even if you say with well, honey, or if you say you know straight direct authoritarian, it's up to the person how they're gonna take it. You know, some people just comfortable with telling what they want to hear and like you know consistently screwing up, but they they comfortable because it's like a dopamine in their head. They so used to tell them what they want to hear so much and stuff. It's like you tell them the truth and reality, and like they don't care because they still got a lot of people feeding that wanted truth from their version to her version or his version dopamine versus I'm I'm about to tell you what you need to hear and stuff. And it's either they're gonna take it or leave it and stuff. So it's like it's up to the person how they're gonna receive it because they want better outcomes and stuff. They have to look back within themselves and realize, yo. Well, the strategy that I'm doing in the past and what people were telling me hasn't worked. And that's the reason why, you know, what's going on earlier that, um, I don't know who mentioned it, who mentioned it, I forgot, um, about we got all this information so much, it's become an information overload so much. You're like, they don't know, it's like one simple thing. It's like, but you're listening to so many different things and pair bonding also too so much and nobody's not out doing the work. And so that defeats the purpose. You learn the new information and not trying out the new information you're learning. You're just sitting back and pair bonding so much. I got to, but you know what that does? That confuses the whole situation. But I got, I want to read this super chat. Mr. Awesome, thank you for your $5 super chat. He says, heck yes. I'm definitely looking down on single people when I get married. Poor, <laughs> poor partless souls. But I get incredible, what? Incredible. Incredulous when folks marry wrong. Incredulous when folks marry wrong. You get that upset when other people marry wrong. Listen, concentrate on yourself. Yep. But I like that. Worry about, stay, worry about yourself on that one because I'm telling you, you cannot you cannot pour into other people more than they can handle. And you know what that so is often saying. we care more about other people than we care about ourselves. So you got to be careful with that one. But I appreciate that, Mr. Awesome. Thank you so much for your five dollars. I want to add also too, like you know, with the marriage and single people, it's like two different communities, but also sub communities in both sides and stuff. We got basically the single people judging the married people, but also single people that want to be married minded, but they learn how to grow themselves so they could be on that other side of the community. And stuff, and as we felt there, we got single people that you know that just don't like marriage people. Maybe they they, they felt so focused and want other people be sing, and single and miserable like they are, and stuff. So it's like sub community and the vice versa with marriage. We got different types of sub communities in the marriage community. Also, too, we got the traditional types like yourself, boss. You know, some of y'all on the panel. But we also got you know the modern age marriage like fifty fifty and stuff. Or we got the ones when you know the ro- gender roles are reversed. Where they know the woman's on lead, and then we got the toxic marriage relationships consistently and stuff. So it's like so, so much judgmental on both sides, but it also in sub community communities. And I think another comment said himself, you know, a lady was married, she gets judged by single people and stuff, and vice versa. And then we, and then the communities on both sides they judging each other also too. So it's like. <laughs> So, Mel, take a look at Von Bryant's um, comment. He says the truth given without love can become a weapon. And that goes back to what M. Mills is saying in these spots here on in the space that we're in on YouTube. We want to draw people to our message because I believe that being married will change the community that we live in. We'll change the black community. So we want to draw here. So we want to be more in love than we do with. I can't say that. I hate to say that. We want to be in truth all day, every day. Okay, but we want to have love with the truth. So we yeah. want to draw people. Can I, can I say this real quick though? Hold on for a minute. Hold on one second. Harrison Ver- Harrison Family Values. Hello, how are you? And why are you laughing? Oh, <laughs> Go ahead, Black Bear. So so I, my thing is this, guys. I know I know this is not gonna be I'm I'm gonna do it. I know it's not gonna be sexy. However, why is it that we have to go through all these different transformations when given our positive? But when the people are on these channels and these YouTube streets giving out negative information about marriage, we're not speaking about it. There are people that are bashing marriage and marriage ain't this, and people are, yes, you right. It ain't nothing but a piece of paper. 
right? You don't need to be mayor. You can you can get you can get common law marriage. And I'm looking at these things, and they're not having the conversation we're having. Basically, it, to me, in a certain way, not always, but in certain ways, I think we're trying to find out ways to draw people in and change the way we talk, the tone we talk. We got to be sweeter. We got to be lighter. We got to be more loving. But on the flip side of it. They're having a party destroying <laughs> the very fabric of marriage and nobody saying nothing. We are saying something, but it's it's us against the world. Exactly. The world is much larger than what we are. So that's what you're fighting against. But with that, Aaron, how are you doing, sir? Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> it's good to see you. Different point. Good, good. So I had a different point, but I just want to address what a uh, black man just said. Okay. You have to understand, number one, like what you just said earlier, you're fighting the world. It's a new message to some people. So on the other side, it's the same message you've been If you've been hearing the same message for five years, it's confirmation. You're hearing it, you want to hear it. People love confirmation. People also love to hear negativity, right? And also on, from another point of view, that might not be negative to them. That might be the positive thing because that's what they've been hearing. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to look at it from a different angle. What, what is the perspective of the person that you're, that you're, um, that you're listening to or the the person that you're trying to give the message to. Now, what I wanted to say on the topic per se was, there has to be one, a mutual respect when you're giving a message out to somebody. If the mutual respect is not there, no one's gonna, they don't wanna listen to your message. They don't think, like we said about love, they don't think that you love them or they don't think that you're coming from a place that try to help them, they don't wanna hear it. Two, you also have to have common language. That's why you have to reach down to their language, to uh, to have a conversation. Three also be, has to be it, now. That's when directness comes into play, because if let's say a bus, let's say somebody get hit, hit by a bus or a train, and you say, "Aaron, there's a bus coming," right? Now, if you say it in a way that I'm not, that I don't understand, I'm gonna say, "Huh?" And now, by the time I try to get the message, I'm hit. But if you say it in a way I understand, you only have to say it once, and I'm gone. So we have to understand delivering a message requires tailoring. You know, I used to teach. And I could teach you physics. I could teach you physics using differential equations, algebra, or I could just take a rock and drop it on the ground. If you're a two-year-old, if I drop a rock and drop it on the ground, you'll understand the message. If you're a PhD in physics, I'm going to have to explain to you and use differential equations. But it's not going to work vice versa. Right. So we have to understand and keep that in mind when we get when, de when we're delivering messages. Well, you know, you and I had a good conversation about a week or so ago, and I didn't feel yeah. any resistance from you. None. Yeah. I felt like yeah. you heard yeah. matter of fact, I felt like I walked in on you being resistant, but then when you and I talked, I felt like you were very open to what we were talking about. Well, I was I was always open from the beginning. Okay. But however, I think you have a little calming presence. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's calling me. Uh, but also, I was open for the beginning. It's just I like to ask questions. Well, so, I'm just like saying control, that, uh, I like to ask questions to find out what's going on. The exchange that you were given, the exchange you were given, Anton and the rest of the panel, it, it was like, oh my God, I know he hear what they saying, but you was just like back and forth. I was like, no, 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 this can't not be going on. So that's what I mean by being a little resistant. Okay. That's right. what I mean. Okay, and, and I think. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, black man. Go no, ahead. and I think, and to add to what you said, Aaron, that's that's, that's amazing. Um, I think that um, even with se security boss here, I've talked to her behind the scenes, right? And security boss has been very direct with me on some things, right? Because I was about to make some <laughs> about a month ago, I was about to make some real bad choices of uh, uh, and 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 get outside my character because somebody came for me, and she came at me in a way. And I didn't say security boss. Oh, uh, who do you think? Who do you think you? No. When security boss said, "Listen here, wait a minute. You have to elevate above this. You got to do this. You got to do this." And 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 then Mister Boss said a few things in the in the background. I knew he was typing too. And I, immediately I'm like, "Oh, you're right, right?" Because I built myself to see past how it's given to me. I just see the foot. I see the meat of it, right? So it's chew the meat, spit out the bones. I, I'm. And so I know a lot of people are not built that way. I know a lot of people get a little sensitive when people start telling them the truth directly. But I appreciate it. And I never want, I'm telling you, if anybody's holding me accountable or saying anything to me, 
give it to me raw. I, there, I said, don't dummy none down for me. Don't water none down for me. Give it to me the way you feel it because that lets me know how much you love me. If you care enough about me to give it to me that way, you love me enough to give it to me that way, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to be like, okay, cool. But black man, but black man, that's number one, you got you to admit your respect for her already. Right. And then also, if it was a troll saying the same thing, you might not take it the same way. Uh, uh, I, I, Just be honest. Be, Just be I, real. I, um, uh, I told some truth to some people, and I'm very cool with it and everything. They still took it the wrong way. So, like I said earlier, doesn't matter how you say it or who says it. It's the fact that it was said and how the other person gonna receive it. Some people just not gonna receive it. Some people will and stuff. Also, to what I mean, add also to answer what Black Man was saying, how you know we talking about the positive message, but we ain't getting drawn. But the negative, and I know they just posted a comment. I said there are those on top that's making millions of dollars, keeping people single. We see in the church, organizations, women's magazines, they're keeping us single and stuff. And they're making millions and millions of dollars. We see in the movies. And it's like, shh, we disturb their money making flow. That's like, uh 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 uh. <laughs> you disturb their money making flow behind this. So, you know, and even in these communities, these youth communities, they making money by spreading negative messages behind this mess. Marriage ain't this and that and that. And you see their donations and the chats and everything. They making money behind this, spreading a negative message. So, so Mel, Mel, really quick. Yeah, brother. If you're about to get in the fight, all right, you're about to get in the fight. Or, or you know, let's not put you in it. Let's say a random person, they're about to get in the fight. How many times do you see people about to get in the fight? Everybody's trying to calm them down. Then not one person walks up and says, hey, chill out. And they chill out. Wait, say that again. Two people got in a fight and you tell the other guy to chill No, out. There's, two, there's two people about to fight. Yeah. Right? Everybody on that one person's side is trying to calm them down, like, yo, stop, 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 chill, chill, chill. Mm -hmm. They're not calming down. That one person that they respect walks up to them and says, hey, you got to line, chill out. And they chill out, and they're, and they're done. You got to take it as it is. Sometimes, you know, that's a person they respect. Of course, they're going to chill out. Sometimes that's what I'm saying. Be, be that's what I'm saying. You no, know, and they respect, and they chill out. But sometimes exactly. it can happen that way either, too. Like they, they so much enraged, they don't care. Like you know, yeah. Like get out of my way. It's like a raging dog, like a raging animal. Like yeah, everybody got that one person. Mm -hmm. Everybody has that one person who said, "Hey, I've seen the crazy." Like I'm on the south side of Chicago. I'm on, raised on the south side of Chicago. I've seen the craziest people. Like yo, that one OG walk up to him say, "Hey, dude, chill out, man. Yeah. Calm down. You good? And it's gone. It's done." And you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because you know what popped in my mind. Everything and it was, you know, I'm in a situation. Remember with, with Sway and Kevin Samuels when OG Boss was talking the other week. And yep. I think I posed in the chat because it was a scene from Game of Thrones. Yeah, you did. That was excellent, man. I, for, I forgot to tell you. Right? About that. Yes. Perfect example. I'm gonna explain to all y'all. I don't know the characters, but like that. But um, I hope y'all can see it with it. It was this king, right? And he was like doing like fair base. Like he got the title king, so he was running the kingdom and getting that fair base respect because he was, you know, saying killing people and everything. He's like he's like like a kid. I'm a king by title. I'm a king this and that and other. His it was in a meeting with his grandfather. Right. And he looked at his grandfather, but I'm the king and everything. I'm the king. You know what his grandfather said? He <laughs> said, "Those who keep calling themselves king ain't truly king." And he looked down and was like, what? Well, my father bought wars for you, blah, 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 blah. His grandfather looked down and was like, yo, please send him to bed without his supper and make 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 him his drink, you know, to help him go to sleep. He's like, I ain't tired. I'm king. And they still send him to bed anyway. Mm -hmm. Peter Dinkins' character, like the little man, he looked at him and was like, you just sent the most powerful man to bed without his, his dinner. Grandfather looked down and was like, if you really think he's the most powerful man in the kingdom, then you must be mistaken. Yep. But he's king. He was like, just because you he wears the crown. He's like, yo, just because you wear the crown does not make you a king. Absolutely. That was just good. Like saying, Aaron, yeah, like yo, like this whole scenario, like yo, a, a, a title does not make you a king. There's attributes behind it that make you that highly respect and everything. Yep, and that was and that was my grandfather. Like my sisters would get to arguing because you know it, it, we don't have those Sunday dinners no more where everybody go to church together. Then everybody go to Big Mama house. See, we don't do that no more, right? That family, that family thing is gone. But but 
we used to go there and my sisters would get into the argument or me and my brother would get into an argument and my grandfather would, he wouldn't say nothing. He'd do this. Everything in the house stopped because they respected his authority. He can bam his hand or he can snap his finger and everything in there would cease to be. Grown people in their 40s would shut up. <laughs> Grown people in their 30s would shut up. The kids would go hide <laughs> because they knew he meant business, brother, and he gave it to you like that every time. There was never no, come here, why are you acting this way? No, it was, and everybody would just <laughs> and that's because of that's because of respect. Yeah. Respect. Wow. So, okay. So M Mills, um, do you have anything else you want to add before we let you go? Um, nothing that I can think of. Um, I also wanted to make sure to let everybody know that I have been married for a very long time okay. and, um, before I divorced. And I'm planning on getting married again because I like marriage. Uh, I grew up in a family. Um, my grandparents were married until they both passed in their 80s. And they got together as teenagers. So I'm all about marriage. My daughter is married. She's 34. She's married. She's been married for five years. Um, so... I'm definitely pro man. So I just wanted to make sure I threw that out there real quick. Okay, yeah. Ms. Mills, go ahead. I'm go definitely pro marriage. Now, hold on, Ms. Mills. Yeah. Now, you looking for another husband? Go on, throw your hair or something. Let these men see their hair or something. Go on, smile. <laughs> you gonna give us, um, listen, I saw a man on something the other day. You got to give us an age range. Oh, on Sir Hell last night. What's the age range, M. Mills? It was a man on that side. So he was ready to take care of a woman. 36, 37. He said 40, well, 50. I, I, uh, 60 something like I'm that. I'm involved in the I'm kind of seeing someone right now. Oh, you already got your oh my god. Yeah, I got I got my eye, I got my eye on, on somebody right now. That's on something. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, listen, I thank you so much for coming up. You have helped okay. me a lot. Because you know what? I'm me. I don't know how other people would perceive me, you know. So I'm me. I don't I don't yeah. know. But I thank you so much for that. And I really appreciate it. And I will take it into consideration because we do want to draw. So, yeah, definitely. Great. Okay, let's get talking to you guys. You too. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Mail, you have it. Listen, I don't think you can add anything to that last story you told. That was an awesome story. And I love the video. But I do have a question for you. How in the yeah. world did you find that video at that perfect time to add to that perfect comment? How did you do that? Well, you know what? I ain't gonna front. I was watching a video from another YouTuber who actually used that same thing when he was playing okay. The okay. With, with, the, with, the, with the wire, the show the wire, because with the you know the characters Avon and um Marlo and stuff like that. Okay, okay. uh huh. I had to check out that scene myself and I was like I was like, it was wow. too it was too real. It was like, no, he didn't. I mean, it was almost yeah, like per yeah. it was perfect. I was like, I know he didn't just remember this from season number three. When it's like season three? That, I haven't I never watched the show Game of Thrones. Oh my god. Oh, you, oh, you didn't oh, watch oh, oh, you, you watch Game of Thrones, Secure the Bros? Oh yeah, I did. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay. Okay. I'm like getting into watching that show now. Listen, <laughs> I do the I do the Game of Thrones, House of Cards. I do stuff like that, but you know, well, you House, of House, of Cards, oh, House of Cards was amazing. Oh, this, it, I'm, the last I'm redoing the last. I'm redoing season six because uh, Homegirl is president now. But we gonna we ain't gonna get off the subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was so, it was so powerful because, like I said, and then I thought the situation was swaying him, and he kept mentioning about. Um, but I am a man because I pay this bills. I'm on my own, everything. And I'm like, that's what I said. Yeah, I know. Listen, nah, you yeah. you were outstanding with that. I mean, that was perfect. Me and Mr. Boss was like mouth drop. Like, how in the world? I know he did not remember this from season three. So <laughs> it was perfect. I didn't know how you did it. I was like, I'm gonna have to. So I'm yeah. glad you reminded me of that. That was perfect. I up and see that whole scene for myself. I was like, oh man, like. Shit. Oh my god, you are gonna get caught up if you try to do that. You just gonna be there for about five days. So I never watched it. Yeah, I went up and watched it. This way and tell him like, yo, look at that scene. There's a reason why some guys that's older than you like that don't see you as a full fledged man yet, and you're in your little young twenties. You're doing something that's like a younger man and a woman, young or old, could do. But there's certain attributes that you know what you will see as a level as a man yet. I was like that at my younger twenties. 
and now I'm in my forties, I see differently now and stuff. Just like you said, there's some battles that you ain't gotta go right, right as a man like that. You ain't gotta flex like that. You know what I'm saying? People to see you as a man, but sometimes even by your silence. Your well, let me tell you, let me tell you this too, though. I got so much pushback about that. Black man, you know what we're talking about, right? That video. I got so so much pushback because they were like, I shouldn't have been telling a man uh get into men's business because you know, I told him he was a little bit, you know, you know, you you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, I got a lot of pushback about me just telling him not to argue with another grown man on so YouTube. I, I guarantee it's mostly because of, because of KS and everything. So there's some people that got their little beef with KS and everything. Oh, I so, never even thought about that. You're right. I never thought about that. Pushback about that, yeah. And then, like I said, we got a lot of pan bonding, you know, dudes that, you know what, they don't even know what manhood is as of yet. And sometimes, like, you know... Being an actual man, you ain't got to flex all the time. You know, people right, right. Yeah. Like Aaron said, with the OG coming in, that's the that's the power of, of a man right there. When you ain't got to flex like that, they just know. And stuff. That's what a true alpha male is. They, they just know. They don't have to say I'm an alpha man. People will perceive you as an alpha man by you just walking in, this, in the presence. And they already just, just, just know right there. Yeah, but you know what? I think he got it because he's been changing. I've been seeing him, so he's good. He's good. I'm not even worried about him. He's good. Him is learning too, definitely. Yeah, just, he is. I mean, he yeah. is. I do agree with him. Oh. How, you know, they they twisted his words and everything because I was listening to that old video too and everything. So that that was kind of wrong on his part. But just like you were saying too, like you know, like you know, um, you know, sometimes you ain't got to flex or take things too personally like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you no. know, he's he's still young. Like I said, he's in his young twenty. Like I said, I was like that in my young twenty. And stuff like that, right? Right, and then there's also too like every 10 years, you're going to change. Like, yep, like how you think in your 30s. I'm and not then, gonna even say 10 years, it may be more often than that being a young man, exactly. Yes, all yeah. right, Mel. So, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. But listen, don't be no black man. Did you want to say something to Mel before I let him go? No, no, no. I was I, when it came to the marriage, yeah, I'll say this before Mel goes. So, when it came to the marriage the other night, somebody on some play, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said that when you get oh, it was Bolo. Yeah, it was Bolo. Uh, Bolo said, when you get married and you say, I do, uh, you're committing to everyone they will evolve to. Absolutely. That's and the he, death of your part. <laughs> right, and he, and, right. And he said, that's why so many marriages fail, because we're marrying who we see in that day, but we're not committing who they will be tomorrow. Well, that goes to that gaining weight. That goes to the woman gaining weight and doing this and going through her. Yeah, that's a big deal. So we're going to put a pin in that right there. Hold on to that thought. Cause we're going to um, say hello to money, life and business. And we also going to let, we're going we gonna to let Mika talk too. Cause we we've heard for what ghost the machine. So Mel, listen, don't be no stranger. We'll see you soon. And thank you so much for that. And continue to comment. Continue to do so. And for marriage, definitely. <laughs> so guys, listen, when you're coming into the live, make sure you give us a thumbs up and we appreciate it so much. Um, I don't remember who was here first, but who would like to go first? Money, life, and business or Mika? Which one of you? Uh, ladies first. Let her go. Okay, Aww. Mika. Mika, how are you? You you let us have your husband for about 10 minutes a little bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. We can. I'm at go set up, so um, I'm trying not to break anything. Um, he went to, he said he, he'll probably check you out later. He went to go cook. Um, so, do I, in regards to the main, because there's a lot of topics, but in regards to the main topic about being judgmental, I, I personally, because I uh, work with people so much and I do a lot of networking and with all the work or jobs and, or whatever careers that I have, uh, there's a lot in regards to like communication styles and speaking to people. I try to be cognitive at all times to come from a non-judgmental space, but does that mean that I'm not going to be taken as being judgmental? I have my own disclaimers that I give people when I meet them because I know my personality and I know my personality is strong and may come off as condescending or abrupt. But as a Leo and a director analyzer personality who's far from a filler, I am brutally honest. And I like avoid lies and I don't know how to sugarcoat anything. Um, and I let people know ahead of time that if they take what I say as an attack, then they need to understand that's them. That's their issue. That's their insecurities they're projecting on me. And I'll hold that bag temporarily while we're working together, but it's not mine to own. Their baggage, I'm happy to help them work through, 
but I would never come to someone in a, in a matter of an attack. I am completely blessed. My cup runneth over. I have no envy. I have no wrath. I have no ill will toward anybody, especially somebody I don't know. So your perception, which is your own reality, to assume that somebody is coming to you who don't know you, who didn't wake up to you, wake up next to you this morning, is attacking you. There's something way more deep rooted in you to make you perceive it that way. Maybe you've been attacked before, but I'll let people know ahead of time. You, may, I may come off as that to you, or I may not, but I want you to know that that is not my, what my heart is. That is not my intention. And so I would have to say people do feel that I'm judgy until they get to know me. And then they realize that I come from a place of love. I've even had a client <clears throat> and a coworker tell me that she resisted me for a while because she thought it was like a false narrative type of situation. She was, she said she was thinking, how can somebody care more about me than my parents do? It, she must have some ulterior motive. I can't believe it. But then the more that I cared, the more that I tried, because I felt her wanting to receive it, the more she realized that she opened up and she realized that my support was out of a genuine place and I didn't want anything from her. But so many people have, and that's where her mind was at. And she learned to listen and she learned to accept the love that I was trying to give. And I tell people, people were like, why, with everything you have going on, why do you care? And I said, why not? Why, why not? If, if I have so much love in my heart that I give to my husband and my three children and my mother and my family, that there's so much more that I can give why not? What's wrong with loving on other people? Everybody who was created, every creature in the world deserves that. And I have enough of it to give. So let me love you. I tell that all the time to, to people I meet that I'm trying to help. And they're just like, well, I don't like the way you're coming at me. Look, I'm just trying to love you. Let me love you. You either let me love you or you don't. Why do you care so much? Because you're breathing. That's why I care. That's good. Actually, you, you hit it all a nail on the head. But guess what? I can't remember what that third one was, but educate, empower. And what was the other one? Educate, enrich and empower. There you go. That is me. And from the other day, if you remember, I don't know if you remember or not, but yep. the other day when yep. you put that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, that, that is it. So I appreciate that so very much. And you that's it. That's the answer. Um, although I just don't. What? I don't um, try to turn over the leaf too much about who's who's carrying it, you know, who's who's at fault about it. I just continue to go on with what I'm doing, you know, because, um, you know, when you when you speak into women, it's very hard to talk to women automatically. <laughs> I may That's have true. something going on in the back of my mind about women automatically <laughs> just because over the years of trying and trying and trying. So, you know, I might be coming in a little half, you know. Not not always completely. I try to be genuine with it, but I always kind of can feel or a sense that I'm have. I'm, this is gonna this this is gonna be an issue right here. This is gonna be an issue right here. So I have to I have to do better on my end. So I do accept what M Mills is saying, um, but sometimes you just feel it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you got something to do, and you know, you got people you want to talk to, but you can you can just all the energy. I'm gonna call it like it is. The energy is just automatically off, and I feel it, or you feel right. it. It depends so, on the environment because my time is precious, mama. My my time is valuable. It's hundreds of dollars an hour. So I don't, and that's how it was when I was looking for my life partner. Um, I, if I dated somebody and I didn't feel like this is a person I can wake up the next day to, I'm not going to waste my time to date you just because we're having fun. I don't want to block your blessings. I don't want you to block mine. I need to move on. I don't care if it's been two weeks or 30 days. Like, anything more than 30 days is a waste of my time. Like this is too long. I need to move on and say like when I meet people and they're, they claim they want some help and support and I start getting that pushback and I start getting that attitude. I do not allow negative vibrations in my environment. I choose my space. I control what I allow myself to be involved in. And when people come with that negative energy and those negative vibrations, I'm like, hold up. I have something on my heart to give you. I'm just a vessel to pass this information on, but I don't feel you're ready. So you let me know when you're ready because I'm not getting ready to change who I am and, and get into a space that I don't need to be in just to help you. So I'm not going to push it. So I, I would say it really depends on the environment because if you're in a group 
yeah, it might be harder to be able to escape that environment and let it go. But, but for the most part, if I'm talking to someone and I, you can feel, like you said, you can feel that negative energy that ugh, the face they're making, the folding of the arms, the, you know, brows moving around. And I'm like, you know, do you want this? Because I have, I'm feeling something that I need to give to you. Do you want it? Because if you don't want it, you let me know when you're ready. Because my time, I'm not getting ready to browbeat you and force my love down your throat. Like that's not, because, and, and here's another motto I go by. Some will, some won't, but somebody's waiting. Okay. I like that. And I agree with everything you said. And I think that right there is what M. Mills was talking about, because that is almost me about a hundred percent. And that is what she's saying that may be uh, condescending. But I appreciate it. That's I'm with perception. you. I'm pr listen, I'm with you because I think that's what gets the job done. But I do understand what she's saying. I do. So um, listen, I will contact you very soon. Did you want to add something else before you go? I appreciate you uh, mm -hmm. telling your husband about us and him coming, gracing us. That was perfect. And I have so much I want to talk to you about. And I would, you know, of course, I love for you to be a guest, you know, more than just coming up. I, I want to talk to you about a few things that we've already talked about or that you've touched on. Yes, so yes. Um, that would be very, very good. Um, but did you have anything else you wanted to add? right here? I, I don't be wanting you to get going because then you just you take everything and you give it away. I want you to hold <laughs> on to it for the next <laughs> For the next show, so I don't want you to say anything more. <laughs> so I, it's just only in regards to like, do you marry people judge singles? I don't think it's a judgment. I think people who are married, who are happily married, I, I just that caveat needs to be in there because just because you sign a piece of paper doesn't mean you're happy. But people who are happily married can see the misery in some people, and they can tell by the way they're moving, they have a desire for something. Because a lot of people, when they're in that space, their blinders are on and they don't see what other people on the outside can see within them. And it's more like, oh, I feel bad that you you can have something and I see a potential. You don't see it. I wish you can just see a quarter of what I see in you. And you, you're looking for something and some of it is what I already have. And, and I can help you get to that. And I don't think it's judgment. And I don't, I don't think it's pity either, but it, it's not judgment. It's more on the lines that we know and we can see what somebody else wants. And we're just trying to tell them or educate them, but they don't want to hear it because they don't want to change themselves to be a better version of themselves, to be open for what their blessings are. And so they feel like they just need to be continued to who somebody will accept them for the way they're acting as opposed to where they really are when they find themselves. So I don't think it's judgment. I think, you know, People are too filled, too much of fillers. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so much, Mika. Listen, we will be we will be speaking very soon. So yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming up, and I'll see you Pleasure. soon. Mm -hmm. uh, money, life, and business. Whoa. Um, How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm absolutely marvelous. Um, but I'm gonna be honest with you. With everything that was said, there was like several mic drops. Yeah, there was like several mic drops. I'm, Oh, I'm at a loss right now <laughs> to follow all that up. <laughs> That's what she do. I tell her to hold on, hold that for us. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said ladies first. I should have uh, you know, <laughs> you, you yeah, said How you, you going to follow that up, brother? It feeling went on in there. <laughs> yeah, how you going to follow that up, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what I was thinking more of is, um, well, she touched on the cognitive um, being cognitive to different personalities, but I just want to add the challenge really is um, whether or not you decide to conform to their personality or proceed in the other manner in which you, um, how would you say, um, uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. So you have to weigh that. That's the option you have, especially in the situation. Well, the concept we're talking about now we're talking about the marriage part of it versus the being single. So um, the single people are feel that they are attacked because in the marriage, the married people are basically talking with confidence and that confidence might seem to them as though it is more of um, talking down. 
as that that's what they're saying, right? They're talking that that the marriage people are talking down onto the single people. Well, isn't that more of a them problem than it is to the marriage person? And then the married people conform to that. Are they losing some of the message that they're trying to bring out and they're backing up and not um and conforming to them? Exactly. I would think in this situation that you would eat the meat and spit out the bones. They have to deal with the whole situation. The married people are the ones that are, are winning. They're creating um, the environment that the children need to be in. They are the ones that are um, the, they are the ones that you need for the future. Two males, they might be together, but they can't make a human. Two females might be together. They can't make a human. Now, two a male and a female can make a human, but when the, that human is not in the presence of the male and the female at the same time, it's not going to be a whole individual. So being in that being stated, um, I'm just saying, why would you conform to them and not them conform to you as far as the marriage thing should be the doors of the church is open we're taking up an offering for the bishop the bishop so so money yeah i <clears throat> i agree with everything but i'm trying to figure out <clears throat> and the security knows i'm about to ask why does that so for example i have a child me and my uh me and my lady we live together he, uh -huh. he sees us every day okay we're not married what's I, the difference I, well, here's the thing. Um, how long have you been together? Although that doesn't matter so much, but if you're in a, you might be in a marriage without actually being married on paper. Now, the problem yeah, that I'm talking about is when it's a single, and when it's a single household, or rather it's a, a, a split household. So the child is living with the mother one week and then or living the, with the mother during the weekdays and then on the weekends is living with the father that's what i mean when i'm saying single but if you're together then i consider that as marriage well not written okay so aaron let me ask you this question as a pushback on what you just said you say okay. you're living you're living together and you have a son right yep and in your job you had to sign a contract right y uh, yes Everything oh. in life, you had to go. You had you had to go to the DM when you went and bought your car. You had to sign a contract, right? Yep. So we so we tie ourselves to every other commitment than the person that we that we live with and the person that we have children with. Why is that wrong? It's different because I can't drive. I can't get. I can't drive the car off that lot if I don't sign that contract. I can't go to work if I don't sign that contract. Mm -hmm. I can't just. I can't just say, oh, you know what? I want to work here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab myself a desk mm -hmm. and sit here without signing that contract. Right. Is it different? Right. So he's saying she made a mistake. Oh. No, not at all. Yes, she did. Because she gave, she gave you everything without making you sign that contract. Oh, -ho! wait a minute. <laughs> I'm, always committed, I'm always committed. Because guess what? I could, also, I could also sign that contract and then leave. It doesn't matter. You've already signed the contract. The contract is what holds you to the, the part of yourself that can't walk away. You know, the benefits of it. The right. You can physically walk away. I'm not saying you can't physically walk right. away because you can physically walk away now. But there's but when you sign that contract, it's saying that, oh, you can walk away, but you're not going to leave this unattended, per se, or just like a repossession. Let's say he gave the example of the car. You will sign the car, uh, sign the contract for the car. You could even turn the car back in. But there's going to be some repercussions for turning that car back in because you're going to be you don't have it anymore. No, I, there's still repercussions if I walk away. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of repercussions. A broken heart is more than enough, but contractually, there will be some repercussions if you get married to this woman that you have this child by, and then you decide just to walk away. Aaron, do you have do you have siblings? Yes, but they're way older than me, and I don't. Okay, they're way older, and your mom is still around. Your dad, right? No. Okay, well, okay. God bless their their souls. So if you're if you had an older brother, right, or other older sister, right? Now we'll say older brother, yeah. Okay, older brother. Say for instance, God forbid something happened to you tomorrow. 
and you went to the hospital and they will let your brother in to see you and not let your woman my brother wouldn't know about it well i'm just for okay for just for just for hypothetically speaking if your brother came in he would be allowed to see you over the woman that you live with how would that make you feel um you know what majority of my life i didn't never cared so i don't know no but i'm saying if you and your brother had a hypothetically if you and your brother had a great mm -hmm. relationship and when they come in and your woman come in and say oh my god what's wrong with aaron oh my god ma'am are you family i'm his girlfriend no ma'am only wives and siblings can come in uh is the brother here oh brother you can come back so what if there's nobody there to say to to uh, answer the question do we re re uh resuscitate, resuscitate. Ooh, resuscitate. Ooh, that's a good one uh you don't want to know my answer to that but girlfriends <laughs> can't make that decision they cannot you don't want to know my answer to that so i'm, I'm gonna, gonna be for a long time, for a long time, you wouldn't want no man for that. So I, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Aaron, I done gave you about ten reasons why you should be married. Right. And I, I gave you benefits. I even broke it down to the dollar amount. I don't know about for your state, but it could vary. But I've given him black man money, life, and business. I've already given him plenty <laughs> reasons why he should sign that contract. He's still well, majority, just, majority, majority of the things I've already, I already have covered. But let me tell you what you're messing up. What did I tell you? What did I say? I said, you come. What did I tell you to do? I said, you come over to security bus on solicit. What did I tell mm -hmm. you what happened? You said you, you said you want to be married, right? Exactly. I told him, I said, come over to the solicit. You'll be hey, married. You it's 2023. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. I'm, I said, I told you I was neutral. I know, I'm, not, I'm not saying you I'm not I'm not saying you for or against it either, but whatever it is that's keeping you will no longer be keeping you if you continue to come over here and listen to us. That's all. Aaron. Because Aaron. I already told you how much how how much more you will be blessed if you sign the contract. So you don't that that's the part you don't know about because it's it's just unforeseen. I'm just telling you how it is on the other side. That's all. Aaron, are you a millennial? A millennial? Yeah. Yes. There you go. I'm considered a millennial. Yeah. Older okay. millennial, but I'm considered a millennial. Okay. I, I think I understand the situation. Okay, explain. Yeah, you know explain. I, mean? I don't understand it. What's it? What is it? Okay, it's more than um. It's it has to go with what the way he was raised. It's more of what the way he was raised and what his outlook on life is. Um. So I'm Gen X, but the situation in my life, I seen a lot of things that I seen the millennial generally went through. And what they seen, and um, I don't know too much about your personal. I don't know nothing about your personal situation, but what, from what I observe, um, you don't. Do you have a mother or a father? No. I don't see you as a mother having a mother as a father. So the nuclear family wasn't something that he viewed unless it was on TV. So what's the basically? What the hell is the sense of it? We could do it anyway. I, but I've given him I've given him reasons though. Aaron, I have given you several reasons why. But, but he didn't see it. But he still can't see it. It's just I'm I'm, I'm that's why I told him to keep coming over here so he can see well, examples of it and he'll see. It. Yes. But, but the majority of these things you said I already have covered. I, I I'm talking about all and some. I can't give you the and some. That's something you have to create on your own, the and some, but you don't have all of it covered. You have some. But I'm giving I'm talking about all and some the and some you work for the contract comes all and then happiness ever after. No, I'm just kidding. Not what happiness. Some? What does that mean? <laughs> the and some is whatever is created thereafter, whatever is released upon you once you sign the contract. Once you once you make the promise and the commitment with your total person mind body and spirit then you will be blessed and you don't you can't i can't tell you about that right now i don't even yeah, know I already, you. I already feel like i am mind body and spirit committed i agree with you but i'm telling you it's more to come that's the right. end more that's the end sum even even with a purchase home it'll be it'll be messed up you haven't talked to your brother in years and he owns your house when you pass away because you're not married okay I, i'm gonna let I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Let me tell, you, let me tell you this right here before you do this. I gotta add this part to it. And, and Aaron, I don't know if you were kidding, but Aaron says he has a living um was it a living will? Then you oh, no, no no power of no, attorney. He said she his girlfriend has the power of attorney. So why would you give somebody power of attorney? Power of attorney, but not the power of me. Yeah. 
Because I don't understand it. See, see, this is what this is what um who was that talking earlier? This is what uh Sam likely was saying. We come to YouTube and we get so much information. Now it's information overload. And I could imagine that it's kind of scary for him, for you, Aaron, because there is so much going on and it's so much out there, and you are living your life and you have everything you need. So I agree with you to a, a certain degree. But well, see, I'm on the the side and I understand it. Yeah, I hear you, but see, this is the thing. It's not even that I'm, I'm scared. It's more so, if it's a, um, I don't like getting into li lifetime or long term um, decisions without knowing everything about it, without fully understanding on both sides. And everything I've, everything, every decision I made as a long term, lifetime decision, I thought about it very thoroughly. I've taken my time to actually understand it before I do it because I'll take it seriously, right? And this is more so me trying to take it seriously versus me saying, oh, I don't. Mm, me, me, me taking it as a joke. Because if it was just me taking it as a joke, I would get married to somebody else like 15 years ago. I agree. No, I'm, I mean, you're at a you're at a good spot where you go ahead and get the understanding because it makes it more intentional for you. And it didn't make you uh, stay where you need to stay. So I agree with you. I told you I agree with you that night. But I just told you, you just keep coming over here. I just told you what's going to happen also. But just can I get it? And that's what you're going to have to do. That's what you're going to have to do, security boss, because I'm going to tell you right now, the mentality is he grew when you're growing up and you're trying to rationalize why you don't have the nuclear family. When you get older, you're going to have to reprogram all that out of you in order to want to proceed in the direction that you didn't even have when you were young. So the understanding isn't there. Right. So I'm going uh, so until she gets back, yeah. We must join. <laughs> this is the funniest stream ever. Oh no, this ain't, this ain't the funniest. Right? That's all, <laughs> listen, Aaron, that was for you, Aaron. Can't explain it, but it was for you. <laughs> but Aaron, I appreciate you coming here and continue to do so. But let me do this. Luke Hazley 20 has given us a uh, $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Luke Hazley. You actually get the money line song, but let me read her comment. It says, pair character jumping up and down saying number one fan. Thank you. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up in no yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Luke Aisley. So anyway, Aaron, when you come up here, you got to learn how to move your shoulders. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, though. We'll work on that next time, maybe. But um, listen, I appreciate you all. Do we have anybody else that we need to um, to bring up? I don't think so. So I want you guys to stay here and I want you. Uh, we're going to end the show now because me and Black Man have been here about two hours and 30 minutes. I don't think there's anybody else working, waiting backstage. Um, so I want you all to give your final thoughts. Aaron, we're going to start with you and then we're going to go around and we're going to get out of here. But I appreciate you all for being here so much. But Aaron, you go ahead and give us your final thoughts for today. All right. So um, appreciate this conversation. One thing I just want to keep in mind when we're, when we're communicating with people, we got to We got to You know what? People say directness. And I think that we're thinking about tailoring our message the wrong way. I think tailoring a message is very important because when you tell your message, you're actually being more direct than you think. Um, because it's better to say it once. They only have to say it once. They have to say it five times to beat it in somebody's head. So I think we always have to uh, tailor your message. Sometimes is the most direct way to do it. And uh, having that mutual respect is, is another important aspect of of um, of you know teaching somebody or you know having the conversation, just having the discussion. So I think those are two things that I think are very important uh, and we need to keep that in mind. Yep, some peace out. We're going to see you soon now. Don't, don't you be no stranger. We're here every Monday night at 7 <laughs> o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> see you, Aaron. Uh, Thank you. Uh -huh. Have Bye -bye. a blessed day. You too. Money, life, and business. Okay. How are you, sir? Let's I'm go ahead and give good. us your, um, how, how you doing with all that being said? You, you walked into all of that. Oh, wow. I, I walked into the dragon's lair. I know. It was like <laughs> quiet. Then all of a sudden she laid it out and then you was like, oh. <laughs> oh. So 
what can you add to that? And you're going to give us your final thoughts for tonight. And again, I appreciate you being here all the time. So don't forget us. We're here at seven Eastern time on Monday nights and black men is on Tuesday. Black men, your time changes on Tuesdays though, doesn't it? No, no, no. It's eight 30 Central 8 Standard time every, every Tuesday, every Tuesday. All right. So, and then barbershop every Friday at eight 30 Central Standard time as well. Okay. I got to catch that. I haven't been able to catch you yet. I've been meaning to. You got to be ready when you go over there at, at, on Friday night. Oh, I, I, I always catch the tail end. I'm like, I'm not getting in this. You got to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. you to uh, do some punches and, you know, get get, get everything together before you, get, <laughs> when you go in there. So. And, you know, the last the last couple of Fridays, man, we've really been uh, trying to grow, man, because um, we we talked about Friday before last, we talked about men who suffer in silence. Yeah. And uh, that oh, got real yes. deep, man. A couple of guys got even got emotional, bro. Um yeah, and then and uh, security boss came on that one, um, at, right at the end of that one, I think. And then, yeah, that, that one, yeah, I miss. I didn't miss all of it. I was listening, but I did come up at the end, you know, because I, I think you all need women. I think there's there's a place for a good woman for a man, so you don't have to suffer in silence. I, I think that's the worst thing ever to have right. to do. That. And men are saying they can't talk to the women. Yeah, uh, men, no, men are saying they want to be. Yeah, you you want to be able to go home and lay your head on her chest, but you can't do that because you're gonna throw it back in your face. Um, you know, when you try to do something, she don't encourage you. Uh, she feels like, you, you know, you have to be a machine. Basically, the men were saying you have to be a machine 24 hours a day. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and a lot of men suffer in that, bro. And and that's why that's why black men are three times likely to delete themselves than any other race. Hmm. Combined. Yeah, yeah. Among other things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So now we lay something else on you. Money, life and business. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we laid something else on your head so go ahead and take us out of this what do you what do you want to add to the day well what was your final well, i want to my final thoughts is um with the marriage um marriage versus single it really isn't uh uh married people won um it's just the the fact of the matter is that married people talk with their pride well not pride well they talk proudly and it's being the wavelength is not hitting the single people with in the point that they they hear what they want to hear and they are taking it in a negative manner so moving forward neg single people have to start understanding that their place their lane and understand it's not an attack on them but actually someone trying to explain to them and give them more life understanding and why it should be the way it is and actually how it was that way and how it should be moving forward very good and i definitely understand what you're saying too and um sir hill made a he was joking but he said i am not going to um what do you say? How do you say a black man? But basically what he was saying is I am going to lift up me being married. I'm not going to hide or, you right. know, try to downplay it for single people. I'm exactly. going to talk about it. I'm going to be happy and say good things about being married. So that's what he said, too. So it's positive. All right. Money, life and business. We will see you the next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So, black man, I want to say this to you. <laughs> I've been meaning to say this for like three days. That joke you play on Mandrell with that tricycle with that big kickstand. Listen, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. That was the funniest thing. It was, I mean, that was hilarious. I was like, this is crazy, right? Oh, and the thing about it is not, it's not scripted. It just happened. That was the best. You say, so you said you would try a sticker with a big kickstand. I was like, uh oh, it's done. It's done. I'll never look at a kickstand. I mean, a tricycle the same. Again, never. I will never look at a tricycle again the same. That was good. I got to tell you that. That was a good one. I was like, I'll text him, but I was like, no, nah, it's too late. Let me just stay out of it. That look was at Mandrell. He in the comments. He said that wasn't funny. Mandrell, it was. It was hilarious. I'm sorry to tell you. Hey, well, salute, salute to Mr. Boss, man. Thank you so much, man, for taking care of everything in that background, brother. We got to give props to what you know what they do, man. So. Thank you so much for another excellent show. We're gonna continue to do this, and um, you know, you know where I'm at if you need me, and you have a good night, chat, chat. Listen, thank you so much for being there. You guys have been on it tonight. But you know what? We got a good chat over here. They be so positive. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't that good? That's a I need, some, I need some of these positive people over at Black Men Unfiltered. Y'all come over to Black Men Unfiltered Network and subscribe tonight. Yeah, y'all, yeah, that's exactly right. If you haven't subscribed yet to Black Men Unfiltered, please go over there and do that. But black man, you, you, these church folks over here, you got to be careful. I know it. I know I got to have a, a, a day of the week where I have a church service. Yeah. You got to keep it in the road. You got to keep it in the road. Got to keep it in the road. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Listen, have a good evening. I will talk to you soon. And Chad, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Black man, thank you. Peace. Peace. See you soon. No, you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove your I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You hope you was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had, days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars, we can poets at sunset. It's funny how love can fall out the foreground, get pushed into the back of your mind. We used to twist a spliff and laugh and relax. Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons, so I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.